Like when you're out, he's using the scout. He's not using them to like siege or kill. Because the moment he would turn up to use them to siege, uh, he kind of gets a very dire case of dead. Aramis. We're, we're too busy talking about celery dying. That has been happening a lot. But you are right. We mentioned it before. The, uh, this is a very powerful talent, especially against the CK illusions. Um, and CK, because he didn't take the piercing spell immunity, he did go for the phantasm in the end. He doesn't have the means to instant the burst. Okay. Aramis, however, is a different matter. Boom is trying to save the day. He will scare Raider actually, but not for very long because of that satanic. Okay. Tiny. Looking very tiny, right? Now, as he gets burned out, killed off. Nope. That's still on cooldown. 100 seconds dead. They know this. And you already see Shaz doing the only thing now, which is trying to cut the wave. They are coming. He might get caught. He needs to be KB. If he tries to TP you out. Oh, no. No. Are they going to get it? Okay. Interesting that Lil didn't commit another remnant there. I guess they like weren't confident they had narrowed down where he was. Yeah, it's one of those moments where Shad's gonna like watch it and replay and go. Uh, that was almost the game, lads. I mean, he'd have buyback, but like the moment you get forced into that buyback. Yeah, you're just done. Because right now, if you're, like, you're not in there, you have dish damage and control. We've already highlighted that no one else in Viking does. Aramis is... Ooh. I think they have to, right? Because the, the problem is that you can't hard him on shit. Speaking of that, Magnus, he just found Boom. Linkers gets popped, moving in on the Queen of Pain, and she is just gone. Shad also arrives. So they're going to roll there. Look, stay on top of him and try and force that BKB out. But there's Celery to save the day again. And we also know how the day saving ends afterwards a few moments but not before toby gets killed he says i pressed my buttons i done my part reload across i mean it's a ballsy play from celery it sort of helps toby for the moment but then he immediately realizes he's even further from safety as they're both gonna die <laughs> i mean that was that was like a brady player right i think even we for a moment went wait where did the Venno go it's like celery but they don't want to use it. In Avalanche control, Sonic Wave, Rachio, BKB, who chases in, no Phantasm for 40 seconds. Shad being forced away by the overwhelming right click, though. Okay, Sani, he's ready to throw out some stuns, but there's the Dark Ascension again. It came up cooldown. They'll jump straight on top of the Dragon Knight and burst him down. And Duraccio now in a world of trouble. No Phantasm of Fight. This is enough time to potentially burst him down twice, but they need to be quick. The five second stun means they're going to get turned around on here. The buybacks do come out on the side of Hellraiser, look to re engage. They are finally getting him down. They finally have a Spirit Vessel to work with, but Duraccio is sustaining through it all. He refuses to give over one life, let alone two. They do break the Lincolns, so Quop needs to be a little bit careful, but not two. There is a Magnus, but no RP. It's now coming off cooldown. If they bait them in, this could be big. Duraccio, he wants them to kill him, but they're ignoring him the whole time. He's going to start to hit him up now and force him on top of him. But now Phonic's nowhere nearby. There it is. It's going to be RP straight in on top of him. And now they can't do anything. They've lost the Chaos Knight. They're going to try and burst through him. The buyback's going to come up. But now they'll have the forces to bring down the side of Viking. Buyback comes out with the Night Stalker. They're killing him off one by one and chasing in. And Duraccio with the Silver Rose chasing forward, looking for the next target. Not able to find it just finds the illusion but now you can close out the game there was no veno for 110 seconds you do commit a big buyback but it's on a ck that took forever and a day to die last time they want the aegis to expire Oh. It, it seemed like there was a little bit of awkward coordination there, right? Like, Phonic was backing away, and then the call came. He tried to get that. If he gets there a second sooner, that's the entirety of Icon Wipe. Duraccio just still alive, and them in complete control. Yes.
it's usually a like, discombobulation effect. They are a little bit split at times. But, and then again, but anything is possible. If they can actually just be in sync on these timings, which they'll have an opportunity again in 30 seconds. You can already see that Kasani has moved towards bot, so they're looking to close out this next Roche is on the menu. This is one of those moments you sit in silence, like the Viking, you want to... Because we're coming. Your place. I wish we had more sm I'm talking dotes. It's way too polite. Yeah, I did. It, yeah, we're very, we're very shy people. Very humble. Where is it? Have you ever... I reckon they could. I think Celery would surprise me. Here's the thing, like, here's the thing. People use like the word vegan, like, like the person nice. Maybe he just enjoys murdering plants. He said he doesn't like them. <laughs> there you go. That... Like he spells it incorrectly as an insult to celery. They will never be as good as he is. Moving in. They have found the CK. Not an easy target though. Stun out on a boom. Does force the DK. Me, but Phonic with the RP straight away. Sees the opportunity. And now with the Phantasm trying to get through. They only saves the day. They will be able to find out. Yeah, Phonic Wave does not change that. Toby does get the Poison Nova out. They are going to tick down a little bit, but they have so much sustain here. You just need to get out. The roll through does connect on the boom. They'll pop the link and roll straight out. A little back across to a different target. Shad did go in. The BKB gets that bid. They're actually fine up with his own. But back off for the moment because he realizes the bigger BKB being lost here is Shad. A look to reinitiate. Aramis does get dragged in towards the CK. A lot of time for, but no follow up's going to be there. So the tiny is going to go down. Dead for 115 seconds without buyback. Yeah, it, that that kind of time old feeling of if you go to BKB in a Lincoln, I know I'm having a rough one. And I don't think we've ever really come up with a true one for you. So I have to build a BKB at Lincoln's and an A on disc. I think we're beyond that. Mm -hmm. No, I mean, the regen reduction oh, is ultimately it's like, please don't insta kill. Instead, they'll just insta kill your buildings because they don't get the benefit of any sort of extra armor. It says it's time to close it. Good one out, boys. We've had our fun with Viking. Oh, time to send them back to the drawing board. Boom, just trying to buy some. P rolling, run top. Toby, they jump on top for five seconds. Time to go. Step is going to run out before that. Ice Blast is through. Shab with the BKB chasing with the Dark Ascension for Chaos Knight. Only down to half HP. It's not good enough. Toby's dead. They'll spin around. Look to try and poke away at these towers. They're waiting to heal up a little bit with the Satanic and go again. But the fear does come out from Boom. Trying to buy enough time. Duraccio is getting low. They'll jump in straight away with the Abyssal. Forced up to get him out of the way, though. They're trying to chase through Sonic Wave to get him low. BKB from Phonic tries to steer away, but can't. He's brought down. And they'll find the CK as well. They're able to run them through. Find the buyback on the Magnus straight away. And Lil will be the bonus meal on the start. Because he tries to move out. They will chase. And they will find. And they will kill. Participation ribbon, maybe? It's like, I, don't worry, guys. I bought back so I can empower my carry to fight. Oh, he's dead, isn't he? <laughs> he just looks at the DK. Can you build a Manta so I feel like I'm playing with the Chaos Knight again? Can you just... <laughs> like in one of those sitcoms where someone starts dressing someone like their ex because they want them to be them. Right? It's like, can you just, can you just be this person? Jesus, that got depressing. Oh, Roach! Okay. Roach is going to be up in 20 seconds. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think I can have the ability to flick the crap out of that big boy in the pit quick enough before the CK is back. Oh, they haven't got a choreo. They don't care about it. They will care, though. Celery's been found. 
Howl likes to buy some time. The Ice Blast will kill him off the jump. Right away under the air, but the distance does come out to Shad. He doesn't want to use that BKB just yet. The RP does connect on the two. So you don't have the damage on your seat, it will do you. Chad, but low, he's gonna go down. If you get a chance to BKB, Aramis, he needs to do a lot of work here. Boom actually doesn't even get the damage to fly through with it. They're trying, but he is just fighting against inevitable death here. As Toby is slivering on it, and he will throw out the points. No, but only connects on the three. I say only. Big range with the AoE will allow him to poison all up, but the damage is not there, and Boom is dead. That fatal error might have just cost Vike in the game. They'll hunt forward looking for Toby. They say, how do you like stuns, little boy? Because we've got a dragon tail, we got a roll, and we got your GG. Game one in the hands of Hellraisers.
Dire Team Ban. Why is that fucking? You have ten seconds left. You have five seconds left. Yeah. The ramen of a. Ads, man. It's all about the ads. I'm at 60 seconds down the first. We've got a minute in them. Actually, what am I talking about? Damn it. Run it now. Oh, shit. All right. Live. Five. Radiant team ban. Welcome back, folks. Viking. Not GG versus Hellraiser. EU versus CIS. Round one, as in the previous series, went to E. Round two. Still up in the air, but Hellraisers, they have given themselves at least a draw situation. They have saved some CIS space, and now we're going to see if they can take EU space and drive it into the mud. You have 10 seconds left. You have five seconds left. I mean, <laughs> at this point, considering like how rough CIS has had it recently, especially with, you know, only one versus pro squad allowed to play at a time, I think they'll take that. That's like, that's the credible victory they'll take, you know. Uh, maybe what actually happened, Hellraisers were just seeming monster and Viking won. They came out with a powerful energy they get from one play. Radiant team man. You ready for that? Ready for that noise? That's like Jenkins when gold Radiant comes team. from stacking, right? You know how he gets about that? Like, that's me with that noise right there. So. Whoa! Whoa. I, I'm afraid not, sir. Some people have um, an astute ability. You have 10 feel it is. Because, like, you know, their, their senses are just stronger than yours. Because, like, some people, I could have done that blind and went, what was it? And there'll be the stupid people like, oh, it's Coca Coca Cola. Like, no. I would be like, that was Monster Original. And then I'll open another one, like, yeah, that's Mango Loco right there. I'll open another one, like, that's one of the Jarvis, baby. That's the sort of caramel. <laughs> There's a moment where it's just going to be a troll and it's just all not energy drink related at all. It's just like carbonated waters you've been open in the whole time. <laughs> Oof. Dire team Jesus. Enchantress. That's some harsh. What's my win? What's my upside here? You know, you, you give me. Deal, deal, deal. You had me a monster. Yep. Uh, they got it. You a classic when it's not left. banned because the IO has been banned instead. Oh you my, how we could left. never. I feel like. Okay, that's the final time I do it. It's just. There's something about this team, right? They don't change from those two heroes, is it? Radiant team pick. Ah, he hold the horn of madness. It, it was an unusual game for Funny. He done what he needed to, right? But I feel like, as I said before, you know, I'm like a bit of a Funny fan at this point. Whenever you see him on mag, you have 10 seconds tends to like, kick the crap out of his laning opponent and then kick left. the crap out of the game. Dire team bear. Look at Yeah, uh, it's also when you're up against. So I'm, I'm wondering if that's actually. Like, Rubik is not bad yeah, against these heroes, right? Because it gives you an instant way of interrupting Magnus. Um, I'm wondering yeah, if they've got, like, some sort of weaker laner in mind for the offlane. Because usually when you pick Rubik, like, Rubik is uh, kind of what Warlock used to be when you had all these spec picks, right? It's like this default, I can't lose the lane. That's what Fade Bolt does for you. It's, like, for a long time been. Not even a 
polarizing spell, but I almost feel like it should be, if you get what I mean. Like, it's so... It's so easy to at least draw the lane by just pressing left. that one spell over and over again. You have five seconds left. Hmm. And that fits, right? That, like, fits with what you were highlighting earlier in the day, that Viking don't really draft in a way that isn't fully focused on winning straight away, right? They, they're very much a team that looks to win the lane and then snowball. And picking these heroes helps to ensure that they can't lose the lane. It's just I'm not seeing them win the lane by having these things so far. Dire team ban. Radiant team ban. Pride. You have ten seconds left. You have five seconds left. Yeah, that, that's the big thing here, right? Is like they. I think also for Viking, the way that they like to play, the type of heroes they like to play, I think fundamentally CK is quite a good hero against a lot of other picks. Um, and the way that Hellraiser has displayed it, if they get the Mag and CK together, it's almost like it's Viking's Kryptonite. So I like that they've prioritized that. You have 10 seconds left. You have five seconds left. Radiant team ban. Yeah, PA is actually a pain in the ass if you're an Enchantress. We've all been there. You're standing still. A dagger comes out of nowhere. 1300 damage and you're just dead. Yeah. <laughs> it is, but I think Rubik's stat gain is a little bit superior to an inch. And also one's the one's the four, one's the five. I like how I've chosen that choice of words. A little bit superior. Not, not overwhelmingly. Uh, I think, think Rubik has like two strength gain. I want to say like inch is 1.8 or 1. Really pitiful. Smart, not strong. Yeah, 3.8 in game, but 1.7 strength gain. It's really low. Uh, and also your armor is low, right? So you're not like, that's another thing. 1.8 on Enchantress, 2.5 on Rubik. So at least you have the ability to take a few more hits. Also, this is a hero like Ench starts 4.17 armor, 3.8 Rubik. So they're basically the same. I'm just getting into two main numbers now. I'm sounding, uh, 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 sound of smart's not a good look on me. Look, look, blood seeker, smell blood, run. I think every team has to after what Zai demonstrated uh, when Team Secret started running it. Stop touching me. No. Uh, the only thing I'm a little bit worried is like how you're gonna build this. So is Hellraiser like are they gonna have Magnus prioritize like guarding Greaves that type of item? Because so I would like to see you some sort of sustain against the Bloodseeker. Yeah. Yeah, I'd imagine so. Uh, but it's also a case like we don't know 100% this is a phonic Magnus. Remember, because Kisani does play as well. Yes. I mean, ultimately, like when you're playing support Wind Ranger, which is what I'm expecting this to be, um, you you don't you really play in the same way, right? Left. So like with a core Wind Ranger, you get seen, you get ruptured, and like you should you be seen because you're usually pushing waves away. Uh, a support Wind Ranger rushes a Blink Dagger and just kind of ambushes you all the time. But you might like still be able to play your game to an extent. Also, I think Bloodseeker has too many targets now. Like, you want the mag removed from the fight because RP's a threat, but now also the troll because, you know, you can basically make him kill himself with battle trance. You have 10 seconds left. You have five seconds Interesting left. that that got through, uh, actually, over the lifestealer ban. Radiant team ban. Yeah. I think troll's still such a potent pick. Like, there aren't many lanes that necessarily beat troll. It all comes down to, uh, I think, a lot of popular offlaners are 
melee heroes for a start and you have that mischance on troll so trading is easy uh and also he has a disrupt oh So if you're facing off against the Ember, I wouldn't mind something like maybe a Void Spirit for Hellraiser right now. If they want to have Magus free. Uh, yeah, I think it's really good against Bloodseeker. Like, it can be very hard for him to, to catch you. Uh, Ember as well. Like It's it's kind of a... I think Ember versus Void Spirit, everyone would probably define it as a, uh, a skill-based matchup. Like, it's very variable who comes out atop on that lane. Uh, and they both have similar limitations in terms of like the ability to gank in the mid game, right? They're both reliant on these cooldown spirits and with the Ash. Yeah. TB ban, not too surprising either. Like decent against the troll. Uh... Or... Yeah. I mean, TB is just the go-to, right? Like, I'm not going to say there's no is a bad TB game by saying the last like two or three months been proven is very difficult to find one like this hero is ridiculous can, can you name me another hero that can go to jungle at level two and not be considered trolling level two as an anti-mate I'm, I'm, I, I swear to god yeah how close is almost dad because I will I, at the end of the stream I will pull us into a match with me as a coach and I will watch you level two and anti maze jungle <laughs> and I will watch the reports. Yeah. Yep. Storm, like, it's fairly decent against the Ember. Also, like, it's just a very easy way of sniping out the Enchantress and the Rubik. And Bloodseeker is very limited in how you can deal with it. Uh, you have 10 real question is, like, where Hell is. I'm really curious because you could run the mag mid you here and you could just accelerate left. past the Ember. I just feel like they maybe want more active of a mid. Okay, so they are going to do this. They're going to put Mag in the mid and then a Bad in, in the off lane. Actually, to be fair, that's not even certain. This could be a Wind Ranger mid. I don't know if you want to do that against an Ember, though, because he'll just poke you down with the Slight of Fist build. You have ten um, I was thinking, like, maybe as a 4, but yeah, I think you're right. Like, ultimately, this it should be Wind Ranger 4. A Bad is really wonky. Like, he can work with a 5. He's really obnoxious. But it just doesn't have the upside it used to when you could deny yourself. Right? It's kind of weird that I, I feel like there's just a very subtle underhanded message being sent to players that every hero in the game is not allowed to kill themselves except Dex. You don't really have a combo at all. You go face this point. Pick a spec. All right, they will. Be cool. Yeah, I think they were down to like faceless void or spec. But even if you go spec, you're against the Magus. Ultimately, they no. It's like which way do you want to play? Like if you're picking spec, you're assuming you're gonna be ahead. Uh, whereas void's kind of like you can get late game and you can chrono the troll and kill him. All right. Whereas a spec that doesn't have that sort of control. I guess also Bloodseeker's uh, blood right is pretty good in the early chronos. You have ten seconds left. Yeah, I, I think that's kind of the go-to is like early chronos, Bloodseeker faces void, and then like left. Ember's probably gonna do a slight fist max build and they poke. Um, don't know if he's going to prioritize many points into the chains early just because you're against an Abaddon as the game transitions out the lane of phase. I am curious to see what Lil's going to be able to do on this Wind Ranger, uh, especially against that top combo. Because you are a squishy hero and Chantress isn't impervious to like Rebel, but when your laning partner is an Abaddon, you don't necessarily have the lockdown. You have to land a shackle shot. Sure, but that's the thing, right? Like you shackle shot him. Think how long shackle shot is, like two and then two seconds. So in 2.6 seconds, even as a fast hero that Baden is, he has to move from creep to wherever the enchantress is and start clicking. Even then. 
I think between those two, like, it, it can get very volatile, though. Like, Lil does have the advantage of Windrun, but Celery has the advantage of, look, I have another creep, lol, I'll bet clap you dead. I'm ecstatic. I mean, Mac, or, they mean, like, this is another weird one, right? It's like, I've been discussing with people recently. Is, is there really a game that has a bad time, like a bad lane? Especially as a mid. Like, you'll just farm. You've seen it, but like, that's the thing. Like, like what you say you've seen it, what you've seen Easy is he's reason. left the lane to farm jungle, right? And then, exactly. And then, like, if that does happen in this game, for example, they have a Wind Ranger that can sit mid, then gets a quick six, maybe gets enough gold to pick up a quick javelin, and all of a sudden you have another pick off type hero. All right, I'm a, I, I'm a, I'm a throw some of you away because I feel like we're always going Viking. You're de you definitely are going Viking. So I'm a, I'm gonna do the other side. I'm gonna go angry eyebrows here. Like, let me show you what they have. So, well, they're gonna be able to accelerate the, the farm a lot quicker. Uh, they also have individual like pick off potential with the Wind Ranger. Uh, like, they, they, if you look at the ultimate, they don't have to necessarily stack their ults to find kills in the series, right? It's like, I don't think the cooldowns are going to limit them, and that's something that Viking are going to be hurt by, is that when Chrono isn't available, if they haven't got a big fat ember at that point, like in the first 20 minutes, that, that window, without a Chrono, like, your pickoff is a little bit weak. <laughs> and... And here's the hard part. I don't know if I should keep leading Hellraisers and we'll do like a for and against argument thing. Because what I do want to point out is that Hellraisers have little to no sustain against the Bloodseeker. So from a laning pressure perspective, they get these heroes low, Bloodseeker goes zoom zoom. Also, this top lane's damage output should be very limited because you're going to be zoned away by the Blood Rites and the Fable. person the trains ah uh, what can i say there's too much pigeon analysis we'll do that to everyone they don't pay me for my brain they don't pay much uh oh this goes is so frustrating well yeah it's yeah it doesn't last long that's the crux, right, with Enchantress. Like, once you get level 2 Enchant, spicy. Uh, but before that, it's just like, it's just a quickie and I'm off, right? So when you're in Enchantress this situation, you sit there and go, oh man, I kind of feel bad now. The ghost would have been really good at level 3. Now you're going to pray that another ghost comes up. I had this as a doom last night where I was running around for like five, five minutes trying to find a centaur creep. Like, these type of heroes can really really get frustrating to play if you get unlucky on the creeps. <laughs> ah, the classic. Yep. I think uh, do like a Doom is probably something right, like if you can play possible Doom. Like try picking that up when you've got any sort of hero that's issue is mobility. And all of a sudden you can very easily win the lane because you're just zooming. I'm trying what, what the other
Oh, uh, yes. The Alpha Wolf is like always the gold standard, right? So when I was doing a lot of post war doing when everyone was, it was like if you found that that creep, GG, you kind of just won. <laughs> It is the new version of you remember the old uh like gg definition for doom as if i find the sato creep if i find the one that celery has right now gg i win again uh, uh then it changed it's, it's still pretty good but like the, the crit wolf just surpassed because you started boots on a doom and then you just ran them down uh i agree definitely for like an edge though any creep that has castables is better i think funix funix might be dead if yeah he has to. He had to very far. If he didn't very far there, he would have got his super body killed. I see him died in the fight that he needed. Oh god. I mean you would have preferred the purge now that you see that there's a point and wind run from Lil. Because then it's just like he tries to run away. Uh oh, dead. So you take. How's the mid lane looking? So so far pretty even a few more denies for kasani you kind of expect that though like you just got the superior firepower of the empower <laughs> and then you should farm better and boom like he has done what i was expecting he's maxed out the flame guard he does have a cheeky point here in chains but it's all about i need to be able to relatively keep up with the mag um if, if you go for like a slight fist max build the only time you do that yeah because he's got bottle that's it he just wants to force the charge and he's about to get six as well so he'll be able to go back on a rem um but like the only time you max out slight fist is if you see a hero that can't fall back to jump All right so I'm, I'm i'm gonna i'm gonna call him out because the only person i can think of recently done aa mid is like dendy if dendy picked an aa and you're a hero ember you max out slight fist because you can't do anything else but sit away rp looks like he's beat to six skewer back under the tower he said you're so happy here before boom it won't be the first blood but it will be a kill the first blood actually went to duraccio in the top lane as there was a trick toby oh. no, no mana can't throw out the axis the irony of a blood seeker of all heroes being low on hp is not lost to me Oh, no, no, let's not get into that discussion of like mirror matchups. Oh, good lord. I think League even removed it because it was so dumb. I think there, there was, there's maybe a very short phase where their rank just didn't add it. Or maybe I'm wrong with that. Oh, yeah, that's very different. Oh, God. Don't get me started on the Overwatch rules. I feel like I have to, like, honestly, I'd have to uh, chug 50 of these cans and then headbutt the table before I can make sense of what they do. Uh, but let's, let's, let's not screw over my opportunities and one day maybe get hired by Blizzard even though it's not going to happen. Let's just say they made peculiar choices. <laughs> They're busy watching the heroes <laughs> storm tournaments. They make up... The staff members make up half of the 20 people watching that tournament. Oh boy, oh boy. I'm just kidding. They don't even believe in scene. That's why they killed it. Um... Oof. It was a bit. Remember that that game was. So, so here's the. Okay, let's, let's head talk. Like, we really do turn this into podcasts. It's fun. Um, it's fun, it will die, but there's, there's the part that isn't podcast. But look at it like this, right? At the same time that Heroes of the Storm decided to want to be more competitive, uh, Hearthstone decided to. The, like, they, they literally. They, I think they probably said that the game was too serious and they wanted to be more casual so they so imagine this you have one game that is like really good as a casual beginner game that's here as a storm you could actually have the most players on a moba out of all the mobas because you have like ease of access right you're the entry moba uh and then you have hearthstone which is like extremely competitive fantastic competitive game and then they start rngifying it they start introducing really dumb stuff to make it more casual is it me or does it feel like the project leads for those those projects walked into the wrong meetings? Well, I think the Hearthstone guy walked into the Heroes of the Storm one. The Heroes of the Storm one walked into the half, And it was like, one went, the game needs to be more competitive. And that one went, game needs to be more casual. And everyone in the room just went, I don't know why he's doing this, but he is our boss. Dyer's top tower is under attack. <laughs> for its life. Uh, that, 
That is what some. That's what the very crap, terrible, like middle aged and didn't adapt to the world product managers do. Yes. Because product managers like sometimes they're almost like salespeople. Sometimes they like they try. They're trying to represent what the client wants, right? Uh, that, that's too much nerdy talk. That's not even fun memification of mocking people. Now, now we're getting corporate. Now we'll be a kill. Bad, I, I mean, this is the second time where I'm going to say it. Like, Funnick is not having a good game. The difference in this one is he has to have a good game. Like, last time you're a mag, right? Like, last time you're like an RP and you're scary. This game. Oh, I pressed borrow time. Don't touch me. 10 seconds Your later. Why am I dead? The like, you've got the dispel. Don't get me wrong. But I don't know if you know this, Dan. But um, dispels don't work very well against Chrono. No, I... One day, maybe. Uh, we notice I call them dispels because I use Dota language, not flinters. Well, Toby's, Toby's getting angry. Yeah. See, look, Toby has a cleanse. He tried to cleanse Disruptor with all his HP and failed. See how that could be misused? <laughs> For the op opportunity he was there. As Kaysani will find his opportunity to go up an RP. But it's a waste. Boom was able to move away. Kaysani barely lives to fight another day. Not fighting on this thing. Yeah, I think it's like what it comes down to is like we discussed some mag before, we discussed some all day with like certain heroes that simplify or complicate and are easy or whatever. And the thing about Magnus is while there is opportunity for like high skill plays and it is a complicated hero at times, I say at times for a good reason. When you break down this hero, it simplifies your game a lot. Like the troll has a free battle here, right? Uh, it's why it's been a pretty dominant victor pick in like tier two and tier three games alike. Lil gets blocked. Uh, now with that tower, they're gonna look. The capital rather gonna look at that tower. Kisani is like, I will walk there. No, he will live. Oh, Willy. Oh, the rocks. The rocks spam with a little bit over the top. And she built more than she could shoot. And with Funic arriving, they need to retreat. So they didn't even finish the tower. The catapult should do the rest of the work. Nope, denied. Half the goal. Oh. Duratio Map. Duratio Flick. Duratio Roo. Oh, good lord. Now, meanwhile, Shad is like, could have went, could have chrono, but would have done nothing because we don't have a combo. This is that window we were talking about. Like, you mentioned, like, you can see Viking pulling ahead. This is, like, do or die moment. Hellraisers can start, like, pressuring. I think if they do, uh, this map could get very tiny for Viking very quick. You need something though, right? Like, look at your lineup. Where's your where's your accelerant if you don't build a Midas? Definitely. I mean, you, you don't. I don't think you often pick faces where to be a fight for, right? Like we talk about these these combos, but they're usually weak combos these days. Like padded for when you come online. So like think Jukira, right? You have a macro bar with the current. It's good. That is all that will be said. It's good. Baden is looking like a sad boy. You know, Funnick was starting, he was starting to have a good game, wasn't he? When he left this lane. <laughs> Just when he comes back. <laughs> there is no hope. Tower is its in instead, he just looks like the type of hero that would sing Cut My Life Into Pieces over and over again. He's gonna pull that hood. There you go. He's gonna pull the hood further over him and it just get a little bit darker and a little bit more sorrowful. Here. There's so, like, uh, what is there's that? It's a set that I think... No, it's not that sort of it's from. It's like a very in-source kind of Japanese... Um, but it makes him look 
really kind of emo y as well. He's got a weird haircut. I can't remember the name of it now. But like, yeah, it, even his cosmetics is my point, is supporting this idea. Not that we're categorizing people uh, into like appearance of what they are. Because if we were doing that, if we were doing that, then like we'd look at Duraccio and go, look, what is that? Got him. I'm sorry, guy. There is one or two trolls in here. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Trolls get a bad rap, really. Yeah, they're not bad people. Dyer's top tower is under attack. I mean, like, it how do you define people? What is life. people? Radiance bottom tower is under attack. Oh. Oh. The Dyer have fortified their group. Have you? When was last time you went under a bridge? Excuse me. Like that's 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 kobolds. You don't even. No species you're talking about or stereotyping against right now. Yeah, but they live under bridges usually or or in swamps. Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. It will fall like a ripe apple. Radiance Middle Tower. Nice, came back to that again. <laughs> Simple crisp. <laughs> Like we went on a, we we strolled down the trail of improv and now we have arrived back and let me give you my tuned analysis. Viking good, 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 good. good. Uh, what? Accelerate oh, your speeds. It's a bad sign when you rupture a wind ranger and she just stands there. Like if you're still going in at that moment. Like, like, you're basically calling his bluff, right? It's like, there ain't nobody here to help. Oh, there was someone here to help you. <laughs> Chad? Middle tower is under attack. I don't know if he has the damage. Like he needs to, like, he needs to burst him. Like, the Ember, maybe. Like, oh, the Shaft Shot. Oh, good, though. He'll be able to get the, the Battle Trance, actually. So, yeah, they'll have him. Reinforce come in, however. Baden is there to save the day, and boom, needs to back away. You have a crook. That looked like a risky kill to begin with. Mm -hmm. And has a raindrop as well. Like, like, think of it like this, right? If you're Viking and you get that kill, what's your immediate get play after that because i don't think you're strong enough to roche the creep waves pushed out <laughs> yes exactly but it's the notice how hard a kill it is and you had to use your big ultimate to eat from oh what oh. this is how you use your ultimate I mean, they have a few more, but this is how you use your ultimates. I mean, they pinged Arachio right now, but they don't have a Chrono this time, and he has Battle Trance again. No PP out. Side Naro! Oh, look what we found. Three heroes versus one. Who will win? It is a troll. He is ruptured. All right. Yep. I, I think he's if he's okay right now, Chad needs to be careful of the roots. Uh oh, oh. They switch targets well, but the miss chance is going to come into effect. It's going to work well enough. The power shot doesn't really help, and it looks like Duraccio is going to die. Is I mean, that's risky. No. And it's the outpost, right? Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Yeah, and, and the other thing is they have an outpost TP2, right? So they, they can't get more than one hero there quickly. And as long as a bad is showing, your confidence keep going. That actually sounds like what I'm saying. The only problem is, like, you do get this kill. It, I think it evens out because you failed with the chrono, right? So now you know you're not getting an objective, but it's almost like you got a partial refund on something you broke. The question is whether Hellraiser is going to have a new item to play with at that point. And speaking of fine, this rocker in the bot lane gets found, abandoned as well. Uh, oh yes, this is the easy life. Just press R and heal up. Mm. I mean, I'd advise that. Because if he pressed it sooner, it would have looked a bit more healthy. They don't have RP, but they don't want to fight. Wind Ranger in a bit of trouble. Just testing his blink dagger, it's fine. 
I think they thought the Ember was going to put a Remnant in there. Which would have been very ballsy of him to begin with. But they get some space. Chat now has that BKB, by the way. The only problem is Troll is really close to this Basher. Uh, and if you think of that last engagement attempt top, like imagine that again with Viking's new items and now Duraccio's Basher complete. Like, the only limitation that stopped him is he did not get a single root. Well, if you have a chance for either root or bash, and the root is going to force out a BKB, you still have this bash with a higher chance than root. Basically, folks, bash are real good. Full melee hero should build it. You need to get the disruptor. Uh... Are they going to try this again? Because I'm, I'm pretty sure they tried this with Lil before. Oh, they actually baited him well. That's much better. However, reinforce coming in. RP now this turnaround opportunity. Duraccio goes. The static Storm is down. And they catch the two. Faceless Void already gone. And Ember not long for this world either. Fly a fist to buy a bit of time. But the outcome does not change. It's, the thing I was going to say is, is it me or did they just bait themselves the exact same? Like, I know bait is on later today, but I think we just saw them here because they've done it again in the same exact location. They did actually just find a casual pickup onto the Disruptor and apparently Toby really wants to die. See, this is the problem with being a Bloodseek. He feels so goddamn fast. Root jump in. Duraccio is just trying to finish this off at the skew across the control. Boom. Who's going to get the hands on it? Aegis gets picked up by Kaysan. We'll just have to move away with his final remnant. He does need to be a little bit careful. Ideal, they did want to have that Aegis on the troll, but. Yes, and also. Yeah, plus. We're doing good with, with the, the web plays. That one was not a little bait from them, uh, but it was. Because he pinged the wards. So really, how much was he worth? 157 gold. They had to buy back. He's now going to go back and de ward. Get XP for that as well. He's not worth much XP because he's four levels behind Boom. Yeah, you can take that. Still with the Aegis now and your Magnus as well. He can frontline. He didn't get a chance. He was up, yeah, he's RP'd, and then he, like, the M lasted a second long because they, they basically prioritized the, the Void. Like, if they'd done it the other way around, then Faces Void just go for BKB. Uh, this man cannot BKB, though. He also try and buy some time, but it won't be enough. That's the dieback as well. I mean, Boom is, like, look at his item choice. He actually needs a BKB, but even then, he could easily get caught out by an RP or a Bash. Like, this. This Ember game has completely fallen apart. This is the volatility. You fail twice, and then a Magnus lineup not only kills you, but keeps on farming. They're wasting a lot of time chasing self. If he finds this Corey, I swear to God. Okay, he's, he's going to eventually go down, you'd think. But nope. So, I can't help but feel that time would have been better spent approaching a tower right now. Top like the, the tier one, maybe. Yeah, it's just a case like how you're efficient using your time, right? Like, just because you can go late doesn't mean you want to. We we always see players harp on about how dangerous and unexpected late game Dota is. You don't want to go there against the Faces Void anyway. I think like what Hellraiser has just uh, kind of presented is how overly focused on the importance of each aspect of Vikings lineup they are, right? Like that chase for an inch deal of all things. An inch, you can't go and cut the wave. She can't really do anything in that area. She's just kind of 
wasting your time across for an objective though because they just shove in lanes so quickly but it's, it's all about like sometimes when you break down some of the best dota those few extra seconds are actually quite definitive i think it's something like we as a community started to notice more when certain casters mentioned it and when certain players mentioned it's like you remember uh pts when they had one to be on summits and quinn broke down how he lost mid lane because of the glyph and it's like what but that's so simple but like it, it's simple but it's a ripple effect right every small thing affects what comes next and it builds up Dyer's top tower is under attack. It fights for its life. Oh. Nongrata off the mark this time. The static storm did not find the target. The RP looks good on a two. Trying to bring them down quick enough. Time walk away by Shad. Has got the BKB and Chrono to work with. And Kisani's BKB running out soon. Will skew across to chase up Toby. And Duraccio activates the battle trance. Chase him forward with the dust reveal on the celery. There's no way out for him. And Shad needs to be careful. He gets back straight away. Now we have to throw out the Chrono. I don't know if he has the damage though. They need to retreat from this. There's still a wand as well. Phonic Shield also. Rachel chased in looking for a target. RP was stolen by Aramis, but it's just to slow down Magnus and allow the rest to retreat. But look at Abaddon on the side. He does find one. Blink forward. Kaysani has the control to get the kill. And they'll move forward. Phonic does go down, but it's a trade of the off lane. followed up by Shad finally falling. And boom, without mana, has to retreat. On the side, however, they will find the final cherry on top of the cake as they do eliminate the Rubik. The Rachio gets just a little bit richer. Back to backs now. No. Regeneration. Yeah, and this kill isn't gonna get easier, right? Because he already had the Reaver. He's gonna have to panic. Like, Nacho's looking to diversify his portfolio, right? Like, he's not investing everything in Apple here. Okay, he's like, I need life steal outside of my ultimate. If I have that sustain. In, a, in this like sustained race with, with a faceless void, I come out on top every time. Um, and I am just a little bit concerned that unless you, like, I, I think if you're Viking now, you need pick off off the pick off, right? You need to flip kill to kill. So you're. Yeah, well, I, I don't think they even, like, the fights need to not be 5v5s, I think, for them. They need to try and. Fine pickoffs like non grata right when he died at the start it seems good but because the rest of your team's caught out of location because they're trying to back up your players and ember all of a sudden it turns to crap in an instant Yeah, like they're not wrong about the disruptor and his importance, but his importance is to the Ember, right? He's ruining Boom's game. The ones that are ruining Faces Void's game are totally different targets. And you have to weigh up like whether eliminating that target and the effort it's maybe going to take is worth it to allow Boom to play his game. Like how much damage is he contributing to his fights? Because I feel like right now, uh, Toby's Oops. contributing more to the fights than Boom's able to. And Lil's going to contribute he just got his blink dagger and they're gonna make a smoke play of it if they find void he's just gonna evaporate looks like they know yeah if i can well they saw the mag like i think they saw the mag moving across around mid maybe but exactly yeah, if Toby, like, I think their logic is if Toby hasn't been jumped far, they must be top, right? If, if Boomer hasn't seen them farm in their camp, they're very obviously at our camp. And if you look at the vision game from Hellraisers, they, they have clearly staked their priority. Like, this sector of the map is of utmost importance. They know that the second Roche is the one that will allow them to break Viking's bay. But the MKB is now complete on Shad. So if you are Viking, you want a Chrono into a row situation. So you won't look to make a play for at least 20 seconds more because you know that it can't spawn for at least that amount of time. Uh, oh. They're actually... They pinged him. I don't think he can control the troll though. A 
Trim to try and remove him from the fight a little bit. Lil brought down to half HP. So goddamn squishy right now. Shackle shot is out to Celery, but they find the kill in the wing range, and all of a sudden, Hellraiser need to retreat. Grado look TP away. Will be successful. That means he's leaving someone behind. Diracho is going to need help. Kisani still has the RP though. And there's the battle chance. Dump it. No, the Chrono! Catches on the Kisani mid animation on the RP, and they will be able to bring down the troll, but they need to cut him out for the moment. Toby trying to move away. First hit bash. Gloomer came so he can retreat. And Duracho, he has the right idea. He sees creeps, he hits creeps. This is one of those situations where a lot of want to do that. Moving in. Shad trying to do the damage to bring him down. We'll be able to do so. And all of a sudden, it was a clutch moment. Case Sani not able to get that RP off. And that should mean decisive victory in this fight for Viking. If you hang around as the side of Hellraiser, this is going to backfire completely without your troll. Oh, Static Storm down. Catches on the two. It's just a retreating Static Storm, though. They can't afford this. Case Sunny being stopped from RPing the entire time. Boom. Looking to move away. Able to do so. Banner's going to be brought down. Now the focus fire. The shackle shot doesn't land on the boom. Glimmer came to get him away, but there's a dust. RP. No! Boom! He dodges it perfectly, and all of a sudden, Kaysani's the one that needs to run away. Toby says, hello, I might not hit hard, but I move fast, I give vision, and I will allow Shad to kill you off. Funnick, his buyback will be for nothing. In fact, he will just get another death added on to that six death score, as he will be the final casualty as Hellraisers get team wiped, and this game completely flips on its back. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. There is little it can do. <laughs> I mean, both dodge and everything. The Vikings should rename themselves Viking and Ninjas right now because these reflexes on these boys. <sighs> Me, so they're your favorites. <laughs> also, Celery, right? Celery doesn't care if Lil's removed because. The troll doesn't want to take the time, neither does the Magnus. So the only one who's really eliminating this is Lil. And he built this Blink Dagger to be first there and first in control. But that, that positioning is weird to me. Like, he does court out ahead of the rest of his team. It's almost like he's trying to bodyguard the troll and the rush forces him to play too far forward. Mm Now things in this game begin to look a little asynchronous as Viking are beginning to look in control. Hellraisers, they do still have this formidable two right clickers in their lineup, but Viking, they're getting to this stage where this one right clicker might just be enough. Still a hard kill. That's something we always have to keep in mind. But he's not an impossible one anymore. I think they wait until like half age. I've heard. Uh, Radiance it's middle tower is under attack. Yeah, there you go. You know, I like the uh, I like the dream vision name. I feel like we should refer to uh, Chrono as the bubble, big purple bubble of danger. danger. Big, big purple. I mean, if your support faces world, yes. If you don't slash as well, 100% it's a bubble of safety. <laughs> the next time you chrono your teammate, they ask, what the hell are you doing? Like, if, if you are Chrysalis and Dendi jumps in, and you're like, Dendi, what are you doing? You go, bubble of safety. <laughs> They're all melee heroes. Bubble of safety. Except those who don't. Phonic does not feel safe at all. He's like... <laughs> He's like, it's reached that point, boys. Buying in time. Buying stocks in time. All my investments into time. Did not get a good return on it. Yeah, and obviously Shad has so much more mobility now, right? Because he the time warp once. He's able to actually arrive at these sites so much quicker. So that kind of discombobulation between oh, is Toby moving really fast or oh, we have an Ember Spirit isn't really there for them. Uh, which is like, because it just means that the uh, initiation is in sync. Gaia's top tower has been lost to war. Good in sync, not, not just. <laughs> we. 
which fits into the philosophy we talked about, right? Like that's, that's always what we're looking for, a synergistic element. And I think it was something we, we were talking about before the series with Unique in the last series. They have these individual players that we've seen play well together. Um, but if I was to measure the big difference between them and Viking, it's like Viking, it's almost like they're, they're just all on the same wavelength. It's like they can feel what the other wants to do. And that comes with long longevity of playing together. Uh, it's definitely something, yes. And it, it's something like hell raises over time. But right now, you can like, you can see that they're just going to keep getting picked like this. Like, nomcrata has gone. Lane. Duraccio. Oh, i got to force a fight with him. But with the Rapture, he needs to be careful. He does activate the Power Trance, gets the root, but the Yules to control him. will allow Toby to move away. And now they can just tie him out. They've got the Aegis. They don't really care too much about him. He's trying to tank to heal up. It's not going to be good enough. Yules, Yules, Yules. Oh, I think you just love how stats resistance is not affected by this item. Uh, on that item. It's, it's a rough one because of this game, like I think for so long trolls played on this premise that I'm not killable. And we already said that, that doesn't remain true anymore. Like, believe it or not, the Bloodseeker is the one that will ensure his kill every time because Rock is able to drag his health below the threshold. Isani. Like, isani has gone as well. Like they're just, you see how clean it is, the move across. Like they're not moving without an idea in mind. They're not leaving empty handed each time. Because Hellraisers, I understand that with this Aegis in the hands of the Faces Void, their best friend is Split Push. But it's becoming very quickly the friend of me. Rubik. And these Yules as well. Like, on honestly, these Yules are all ridiculously good this game. Like, we already mentioned the troll, right? Because you build with his status resistance, and Yules doesn't care about that. But also against the Adam. Uh, also against, like, things like the Wind Ranger. The Wind Run doesn't matter anymore. Obviously, at this point, you've got the MKD for that as well. But, you know, I can't think of a game I've seen in a while that has so much value in double points. Like, I would be totally fine with Rubik picking up one as well. Oh, wait, oh, yeah, he's already got one as well. Yeah, so there you go. Triple yours. Right, celery, where's your yours? Don't let the boys down. Yeah. Exactly. Like, I want to see one on Celery. I think you can notice, like, it's stupidly good in this game. Because trolls refuse to build a BKB. Trolls rarely ever build states resistance and a BKB. But once you see this build... I, I feel like I don't want to tell this to people because if I see any of my pub games, I'm going to hate them. Just build Yules. It's like, it, I think Yules is the broken item at the moment, actually. Um, I think it's like, when you think of it as like an accessible item, what it gives you, like if you look at the stats right now, boom speed is always good. It's a hell of a lot of mana regen. Like it helps heroes that have issues in that role. I think that's why it's so good on Blood Scroft Lane. Um, and it obviously is free. Right. But it's, the only time where I feel seeing yules is when you're against the uh, Void Spirit, right? Because it's free setup. Like, if you're using it defensive, you're setting up for the Void Spirit to kill you. Or here is like uh, Underlord as well. <laughs> Long way off. <laughs> we haven't seen the fan score confidence. He hasn't queued it up yet. He's just got centuries for days is the plan. That boy has confidence. He was like, I'm a spirit. Like, it was a spirit breaker thing. He's like, I'm a Bernax. <laughs> hey, it's a good item on that hero if you can get it. Same with the disruptor, but pipe dream, my friend. Pipe dream. He's at least got his philosopher stuff. I'll have some. Yeah, so that's like a fair point is the... We already highlighted how they're reliant with the Yules. They're also reliant with the Faces Boys BKB. If you look at his health, it's not much to stare at, right? You can see him very quickly disappear in a fight if he gets stunned. Like actually, for example, if he got Shackle Shod, 3.8 second duration, he's dead. I think he'd honestly be there for the troll top. Oh, yeah. But then look at trolls. Then equate bashes as well. Because you have to, you know, keep in mind that's an extra 70 damage. Uh, no, sorry, 100 damage. Nope, gonna break. Gonna break. Gonna break through it. 
Tag Storm goes down on the boom, but they're not in position to follow this up right now. The track is on the mark. The RP, they're going in. They want this kill. Can they get through it in time? It's going to be close, but boom, he gets the Yules out. The Yules on the right here controls them up. The Remnant away. The Rupture's going to come up. It does get reflected in the meantime. Toby, so he can't really run for the meantime. Jump in with the Abyssal. Straight away, the Titanic. Trying to go in. The Chronos can the Yules as well. Work not against them. Look, he clean up the Wind Ranger and turn around with the Troll next as well. He's already used the Battle Grants. He's run low on HP. He fights with Shad, but it's not good enough. They bring it down. They turn around. They look to clean up everyone on Hellraisers as Magnus is trying to run for the high hill. They are scouring. But they can't find it. However, yep, and they're just outside your base. So they're going to come for a second lane here, 100%. Nope. Nope. You just don't, you, you can't, right? Like, it's almost as if it seems careless, but then you think the state of the game and where he's at, he has to have every item he can get. He can't afford to have buyback. He's not expected to lose any of these fights. In this case, he's going to lose the final fight of this map here. They'll look to end the game. Yeah. One, one apiece between Viking and Hellraiser. So Viking, they're keeping a cool with one score at the end of their first day participation. Hellraiser's signs a lot, nice, but I mean, I don't know about you. I felt like as this game went on, usually you're used to saying like mag plus whatever. There's two right click carries, right? They're both going to do a lot of work.
Five seconds left. I checkered. Radiant team ban. Read her to ban. You ready? Line five. You have ten seconds left. We're back. Hello. Welcome once more, folks. Five We've moved on left. from E versus CIS to CIS versus EU. As up next, we have got Mud Golem versus Khan. Actually, is it EU versus CIS? Yes, it is, because the bulk so our Slav friends are not CIS. So it is EU versus CIS. Ten seconds left. Well, no, no, I, uh, that's true. You have five right? seconds left. Well, actually, is it? Uh, because it's from. Radiant team band. Check. I can't remember his check. Slovakian. Yeah. So he. You. Uh, and then. Milan and Baranya are both from uh, the Baltic, which. You have ten seconds I'm left. Not yet. The tenth bar. You have five seconds left. It's also not CIS. Unless you're in like Cold War era, uh, you know, with the Soviet Union, you're getting closer. There we go. <laughs> hey, <laughs> flex flexible rules. We I think Dora of all places cannot criticize other things for being flexible their rules. Do you not recall the whole NA stacks moving to SA? To compete just for the tournament. Oh. oh, by the way, uh apparently we need like we need monster on screen. And because you didn't buy monsters, I have had one. You have ten seconds left. Hey, go just done. You have five seconds I'll left. I'll put it at your side. That's alright. <laughs> That's alright, I fixed it here. I'll... Oh, I mean, maybe in the next, we're going to add stuff. You'll have like a nice little rare hat. Uh, we'll give you like, I don't know, long, luxurious locks. Like we'll literally find FNG's hair that's been shaven off in one to be like a wig. We'll put it on you. But let's put the draft. Because guess what, guys? It's not Viking, but it is another enchant. Wow, what a deep and innovative and different every game pack meta we have found you ourselves have 10 seconds left you have five seconds left First captain. I think it's fair that you highlight that though. Like it was very shocking with the lines, right? Because I don't, they weren't necessarily performing bad at the time, um, and they were improving every like event. I was, I was incredibly hyped when I saw that roster. By the way, I'm a big limp fan. Nika Baby was on fire at the time. Fada was like Fada converting to be a captain was probably you one of the most exciting player-related pieces of news in the entire season, and. Um, I'm interested to see how this is going to go because I definitely feel like the trajectory he was on with Alliance, like that was one of the most rapid improvements and adaptations into a captain role that I've seen in the last one. Seconds left. You have five seconds left. Last place at TI is a great way to begin a cast.
only off from there. I, I, you know what it is, right? It's the... You always gotta have, like, that perspective, right? So, like, I can always build my confidence around, like, my daughter ability by saying... I'm not saying I'm as good as Arteezy, but I have one as many PIs as that. Yeah, exactly. Imagine if I tried, right? That's true. You have 10 because, like, left. most things by default, they start 100% win rate, right? Unless you there's a specific if rule. So, like, this, uh... So, here's one for you guys. This is the COD nerd, nerdism right here. Call of Duty 4. If you only stabbed people, if you only melee killed them, you could get a minus number on your accuracy for guns. You start out at 100%. Team so it's the same logic here. I start at 100%. Checkmate, your move are Oh, damn, he's got a lot more subscribers than me. Okay, he wins. Seconds left. It grounds the draft. Like, I've seen some teams really kind of you hammer in this approach left. where, like, your opening Fire phase, you just get your carry, right? Because then you, like, this is our win condition. How do we enable this win condition? Um, and I believe they were picking a lot of. Oh. Uh, that was with Naive. I don't know if this is naive because one or two people in here left. have different names. I'm assuming this is still naive with that, which would make a lot of sense. You have five seconds left. On the most recent patch, right? Dire team pick. Yeah, so I think I think win uh, rate though, like they're pretty far off on their TB, uh, because I remember towards the end of the last, last league they started to turn it around by just spamming TB and getting back to back. Seconds left. Uh, it was how they got through like an awkward tiebreaker. Like they started off looking the worst out of the three and then just started uh, spamming TB. Interesting. I mean, like... Yes, you are vulnerable uh, to start with, right? But you can easily get to a, like a break-even point where you won't be insta-killed and that means that then a tiny with full hp is standing in front of a 10 percent hp terrorblade gun oh no i know how this one ends Dire team pick. Dark uh, it's kind of interesting right because like when we started out darkseer was seriously the, the go-to pick you picked it and it's like well it looks 50 percent better already um you have 10 yeah i think it's left. it's kind of like calmed down a bit since they nerfed surge i think that was like the big one because anything that can break movement speed is inherently OP. like there's two things that are always going to like feel op right um movement speed is kind of an obvious one anything that can break uh, like break past the sound barrier is what you're essentially doing is amazing the other thing is displacement displacement is ridiculous in right? that's why that's another reason why tiny is so good you like oh you almost left. escaped the gang i'm gonna just throw you back to where you started you and you can just let go of the keyboard and die. um same reason why like magnus can be incredible skewer uh let's not talk about pudge that's 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 there's many issues around that hero but displacement is good exactly like well displacement from winning is the problem we have and in this matchup historically i think usually morph takes it a bit uh, in previous patches. You I just feel like in the current patch, left. I do like TB a bit more. I think... You have five seconds mm. left. That is true. You haven't got like a, dis like a definitive uh, need to go for the Murana though, because you know what you do have. Metamorphosis. How about we just... Like, isn't it a great when you draft a morph against a hero that's real ultimate isn't on the ultimate button? Like, like the, the best way I can compare it is like imagine if DK's like ultimate wasn't the ultimate button, right? And you're a more you're like, oh my god. So I think in that regard, I, I still think, yeah. So like you do have that flex. It's a pretty good one with Murano as well because you have stun and stun. Um, I think on the morphling thing, I think it has started to shift back in morphling's favor. 
again because of that metamorphosis interaction we talked about. But TB is definitely up on pre patches in terms of winning against this hero. And they have an Oracle as well. Like I wouldn't rule out Khan right now because they have a really powerful save right now. Whereas Mud Golems don't. Yeah, because like, I mean, the classic is, oh, he's shotgunning someone. I'm going to just go ahead and give them 100% magic resistance. Pause. Yeah, so... So Mud Golems have flexibility. They could send the Morphling mid. I wouldn't be surprised if they do, uh, because if you're morph, like you're kind of happy with the farming lane, right? It's a DK. What's he gonna do? Free fire and look at you angrily. Zeus is a peculiar one. Yes, and DK as well. Like, because remember, braces don't give magic resistance, so strength heroes aren't automatically feeling good about this. So Zeus is kind of a sleep pick. The skin picked more and more at the moment. Um. It's just simple, right? Yeah, because like you, you get your passive, you just max out your arc lightning, you push the wave, and you go farm, and you're also able to harass heavily. And then later on, like any hero that can just inherently give through sight without needing to spend money on it is, or has a way of finding like vision, right? Like Slark was another one. For that. I'm curious if Muggle on those, but they need. I was gonna say some catch with. I kind of like it's not direct catch i see this as a good follow-up right so tiny initiate pango follow-up and this might be a pango mid because i feel like dk can't i mean you can still run the tiny mid like pango can also be a four uh i just think tiny plus dark seer is stronger and tiny can rotate mid to the dk and if pango has level you you that's better because they've they've got a save like the lean is not a bad idea but if you compare these two like dp is more survivable right um and you get more value out of false promising if you have to false promise a leaner as j4 in this game you just kind of look at your ultimate and go what have i done uh because there's a lot of catch on mud golems they've got the pangolier they've got this morphin they've got this tiny like death prophet will build a yules use it defensively and heal up while using it defensively. Yes, which they already have a lot of, right? Like this, this is probably the pushiest draft we're gonna see today. Like, and they also have D push early on because Mirana is like uh, the infamous, amazing thing about Mirana that still makes her a good boss for, in my opinion. Like, you can say what you want about later on in the game, her, if she doesn't hit an arrow, she does nothing. But like early mid game, if someone's trying to make a, a push off the back of a catapult, by catapult, just instantly kills it. There's no way to stop that unless you got like a creep army. Which they do with the Enchantress, not going to be able to maybe match the movements of Gilga equally. Rock'em Sock'em! Yeah, this is the type of game that will be decided by the carries, but it's like, it's not a sit and chill. Like the, the way it's going to be decided by the carries is going to be more on these mids because it is going to brand you on that pangolin. So I think like these two are going to be absolute pacemakers. I think both lane combos have almost equal kill potential, which shows how much I value a tiny pick, right? Because I'm saying a stun into an arrow Stun is equally as strong as Tiny with a Dark Seer. Tiny's OP, folks. Pick it. Like, honestly, the, there's a few heroes that people will always reference uh, for, like, MMR boosting. So, like, a big one at the moment is if you want to choose your games, pick Arc Warden, right? Learn Arc Warden well. Uh, which is especially true in pub games because they go on longer than they should. Uh, I still believe in Void Spirit, like if you pick it in the mid, it's ridiculous. And if it gets countered, just fall back to a support role or something. Uh, uh, Tiny is is definitely like one of the kings right now. Tiny is what Doom was half a year ago. Like you pick it in the boss four and you just do everything. Mm hmm. Oh, 
I think Mud Golem's draft is scary as all hell. Like, now that I've sat and thought about it for a moment. Like, you have initiation, you have full-off initiation, right? You have counter-initiation from the Dark Seer. More importantly about that Dark Seer, is you know we already mentioned that morph into TB and metamorph, uh, which is, like, morph into morph. Nice. <laughs> it's not just that. It's you've got a Dark Seer to surge you in. So... You don't worry about this disengage that Khan has because you can chase really easily. So for me, I think you're right that Khan maybe has, has some pop off in lane through like the the dark uh, the Dragon Knight plus Mirana. Maybe DP gets a good start. But I think more than that, they have to have a good start. <laughs> because I think you get into the mid game and you're like equal or slightly behind mud golems they're gonna like take you across that map and just drag you through the mud mm. Have you noticed a recurring theme, but like you just mentioned that, and I mentioned so much. If Tiny gets a good start, dictate game. It's almost always the case. Like I think Tiny is one of those heroes that we always kind of bounce back and forth on an OP or just good. It's hard to think of a time in the last few years where I look at Tiny and say it's a bad pick, right? It's always had its place, whether it's mid, whether it's off plane, whether it's four. You know, we've gone through it all. We've gone through, uh, the, before this, it was the ridiculous right-click tiny, right? When they gave him infinite trees again. And it's like, what do you do? Oh, oh you just build right-clicks. Like, sure, you might not catch people, but you don't need to because the buildings don't have any movement speed. They can't run away. <laughs> yeah, then tankiness is key. Exactly. And the, the tankiness is key, right? Like, uh, I, I remember I had other people say this, and it's so true. So, like, Liz's classic one was always, you can either build, be good or build braces. Uh, and you can always follow up with, he built a lot of braces. Um, but the other one is, like, just pick, like, you can either be good or you can just pick bulky heroes. Because... Because, like, when you break down, uh, and this is something I love Jenkins for, like, you know, he loved talking about this, is HP is a resource. And inherently, heroes like Tiny have a lot more of this resource. And very good teams are very good at min maxing their HP loss, right? So it's like, you know, it's kind of like when you play those fighting games, right? And someone taps their hero out on 10% HP, brings in the 100% to finish you off, sort of thing. That's what they do. Yeah, and to reference someone from the last series is uh, like the, the for a different playstyle is like this this hero is very flexible and like me played because Bill I'll always remember like he he plays this very savior type kind right his play it's not around just initially getting a kill he'll save a life alongside it right and Tiny is such a flexible four in the way you can play it because you can go with this cheesy boss backs you can also be Almost like a tusk with a blink dagger. I'm gonna blink in and save the day for a hero out, sort of. Yeah. Mhm. Mm it's obvious, right? Like a TB pick at the start, right? I mean, I love that about Doe as well. Like, so much about Doe is this, this fluidity when it comes to what is good or bad. And I always love Johan for, like, his statement of, uh, you know, 
anything can work, right? And it's something we have unique to this MOBA that I don't think any other MOBA can match. Like, if you think of other MOBAs, people could easily give you, like, a list of top 10 carry or top 10 supports. You can't do that in Dota because it's player-specific, game-specific, and, like, the item build so much as well because we have so many active items. Like, think Shaker, uh, mid-Shaker, right? Like, any of a game like hell there's literally games out there that allow you to report people for just doing that outright because you aren't picking the meta hero doesn't work in my lifetime like he's getting roughed up and also keep in mind like top some we didn't actually hit on it's kind of the dead obvious right it's when you see dark sea you can uh doesn't make 33 lane easy It's like the ultimate counter, right? Uh, ever since they made that change, and it's just, it's just, just imagine Darkseer players crying. They're like, Oracle wasn't a bad hero before this. Why? But like, this is the power they can have as well. Like, look at this chase him. One tap would do it. They haven't got vacuum, though. The cooldown on this spell is so obnoxiously long. Yeah, and they tried to improve it, right? Like, they reduced the cooldowns they tried to improve it don't forget that like hover over and look at the most amazing cooldown reduction buff they gave in 7.27b you see that they got rid of a point zero <laughs> i can only imagine it was to do with like there were some buggy interactions with things like time dilation that's the only reason i can think that they would have done it oh there we go see that the fight went on for oh, oh no <laughs> Did nice. you already feel crap? Yeah, you already feel crap about it. And then that. <laughs> He's like, well, I mean, I'll be back soon. I'll just leave it here. Wait, what do you mean? <laughs> They're just going to do that to me. And this is just a sad temp by J4. Like, Milan's doing a really good job of min max everything he has and with tranquils he's gonna beat out the oracle easily in play. like that's that's the the stupidity of a tiny right another hero that would turn what is really a dark into okay let's just win this yep but pango's cat up Yeah, and the, the difference, right, is the, the Cheshire Cat is getting everything he wants out of this, but that's just a DK. It's always going to work that way. He's a dragon, after all, guys. Come on. Would, would you want to tell a dragon that he can't have what he wants? There's a reason they have caves full of people. I do think it is a little bit concerned as time goes on, because, like, we're seeing a lead for Mio, right? But... You expect that. Pango's stats early on are absolutely important. And uh, now... They can't quite get it. Dun, dun. <laughs> yeah, the, the rotation should be definitive, right? So the rotations you're looking here is for Anya to top with an Iron Shell or to mid lane with an iron shell and that's that's the key factor you play away from the oracle with the iron shells and you find pick or you just play on top of the oracle and kill him because you're a tiny so Jin, cancel that salve okay you live fight another day you're not going to be fighting me more on the bot lane father's fight and badly as gilga still has a dd and that dd has like other ramifications because pango didn't get his Mio, you know, he, he got a more refill lead, but like in an even Steven situation, you have to be a little bit careful on Baran. If you swashbuckle wrong, you lose half your eight straight away. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's happening, right? You know what that probably, like, I'd like to imagine, it's not because Fado's too good of a player, right? But it's like, you ever have that moment where you get hooked, you go, oh, the pudge in this game. It's like that. It's just you CP and you're like, oh, I knew it should. Mid lane, by the way. They did use the exorcism, which forced out the Roll of Thunder. Which, you know, if, if you know how uh, magical and physical damage works, it doesn't protect the Pangolin very well. Yeah. 
Let's do some chip damage. The problem is Mio doesn't bring the tower to a definitive point where they can do something with it. So now for a big window of opportunity, like Pango can make a fight happen because he's going to have his ultimate again in 35 seconds. Oh man, it's been too long since it's my energy drink. This is monster so good. Oh, you can chill out. Actually. I just have it. Like it tastes good right now. Not taste good. Deep killing DPs. Right now. Yeah. He hasn't got the wrong thunder for 10 more seconds. So he's got a big one. He's trying to bait this out to the maximum. Squad buck will toss. But they do lose him still. Gilg was able to get the kill with the arrow through, I believe that was. Now they'll chase this for more. Milan's also gone. Is it? It's true. It's like the classic if we bring more heroes, right? Like, if we bring more heroes, you can kill a person easily. Oh, is it that hero likes more heroes? It's like saying if we sack and farm this wave quicker, the Shaker won't get a chance to echo slap us. I think it's a good fight if they have Realm Thunder. Maybe it's like a miscommunication and the fight would last a lot longer. But once again, you're. doesn't have, like, start with good stats. Pangalera is a really rough. Rough hero when the lane starts. Thunder. Uh, this is actually a good pick. Just before you'd have exorcism again. Although that double roll. Oh no. And then they pushed him to low ground actually. So maybe they get it. The problem is they actually. No, they needed to mill him back in, but the cooldowns are too long. Honest to God, like, Dota just hates players sometimes. So that's, uh, I, I, I reckon if we had this broke down, what you're going to see is that someone who added in an extra polygon couldn't be asked to remove. <laughs> sort of. Uh, so it would be, here, I'll show you. It would be like, so um, it would be this, and then uh, like another line there, and another one there, the and another one there, and another one there. And then you'd have like a square to come into the, I don't know if people see that, this is pretty small. Basically, you'd have here. I'll, I'll, use, I'll now represent to you guys. It'd be like line there, line there, line. Uh, wait, why is line not working? Mine's still. Has been slain. Okay, now. Oh, no. Oh, you know what it was? It's because I'm drawing under the. See that now? I'm drawing under it. So, yeah, it'd go like this, like this, like this, like this, like this, like this. And it probably does. I think it's to do with Pangalia's Raw and Thunder. It's like, people. I, I think it's going to do like an in depth analysis of this. It's. it's it's very odd because I think his role in Thunder is like, it's not just a box around him. It's like, oh, I'm just drawing somewhere you can't even see. <laughs> I'm discovering that you can't draw through flowers now in this game. Like, let's check this out. You can't draw through flowers. Dyer's top tower is feeling its mortality. Welcome to our attack. Um... <laughs> yeah, see. Let me just point out the. Top tower is yeah, we. Attack. Oh, I thought you were going to talk about the fact that we love drawing penises. <laughs> that is the most, I agree, that's the most Dota thing imaginable. We do love drawing penises. <laughs> sure, but they'd love it more if they were Dota players. <laughs> do love the penises. Arrow, Bada gets out. Oh, 33 is left behind. He knows he's going down. The exorcism and it ends up being a waste though because there was a haste on the pangolier. My only concern is like you're not able to really shove these lanes because you, you just saw what they done with Cheshire Cat mid, right? They have these interchangeable push parts to the lineup. Like it's the uh it's the transformation draft, right? Because you I mean I don't know if I call DPs a transformation, but kinda is the same like you've got Metamorphosis, you've got Elder Dragon form, and then you've got Exorcism. Yeah, but like you don't have to use them all, right? You use one, you push a tower. You use one, you take Roche. You use one, you fight. Um, A2 if it's a really hard fight. More flings. How often do they win the game? The Radiant have called upon their defenses. Hey, look at that, that tiny. Look, you can't do anything. He's done. Nice. Oh god, free summons. Arrow? 
Oh no, bro. And, you're, and they can't dive though. So they do reveal they've got everyone standing behind the Pangolier, which means the TB is off farming. Very content. At least Skit is doing the same thing on the other side of the map though. Radiance mm. bottom tower is under attack. But he is against an Oracle. So, so it's even more imperative that you snipe the Oracle to start the fight. Radiance middle tower is under attack. Yeah. It will fall like a ripe apple. I'm not sure what the exact stats are, by the way, on Dark Seer plus Tiny, but it is pretty high. Like this combo is filthy as all hell. Yeah, it was more ridiculous before they nerfed Surge, but it's still really good. Like you saw it in the mid lane, right? It's it's a cheap man's blink dagger. That's how I always like to think about it. I'm the type of guy that calls phase boots uh, a poor man's mini blink. It's, it's the mobility adjustment. Sure, but like like the difference, like one uh, manipulates your speed do something right so like you, you like a drums a drums is a mini team play. okay now i'm going too far oh that arrow blocked by baranya hello mr president live 33 he won't be so lucky though because the arrival does get the kill millen tosses one away swashbuckle through and baranya with the haste we'll be able to run this one off however mio is about equally fast he's like come back here it's like he just can't escape the ghost from his past but he does he gets away they are able to get the tower though Mm -hmm. Everything about that draft says push, right? Everything. And I believe you hit this out of the park in the, the draft is that Mud Golem doesn't have easy D push. Like, mm -hmm. You haven't got like a hero that sits far back, like a Rubik, for example. Like a, imagine a Rubik in this game, uh, even instead of like an Ench who picks up, a, like it's the Crypt Swarm. You're like, I am safe. I'm just going to shove the what we can ever find. The prize is mine. There you go. There you go. All right, so so here's. <laughs> I'll explain the justification of my poor man's. It's like a goose blink. I always use it as a justification for Shika. Because, like, that hero really struggles to get in, right? Problem is, like, Tranks are too good now, so Tranks are actually the fourth shaker. Blink. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, like, the, the active catch out, right? Like, phase boost used to be so good. Uh, they're still decent on melee here. Really want the clicks, but obviously, shaker, unless you're playing at mid, isn't really about the clicks. And also needs treads more than phase boost. Oh, the problems of being a, a person who's only allowed to build one set of boots unless I want to be judged. I've had those games recently. The worst ones are when you accidentally build tranks. Which happens often. It happens often. Because uh, in, in the post 4 role, like, win this is really good value on a lot, a lot of heroes, right? But it's also like a ring of regen is nice. It might turn into headdress. But, but easily turn into headdress. Then... I'm inevitably going to forget to lock it and uh, all of a sudden going to have tracks. But it gets you in good habits, right? It's like, you know when you keep doing something stupid and eventually you learn. Yeah, learn from mistakes. I mean, I could, you know what I could do? I could build those tracks and blame it on like my Terror Blade or something. But I don't. Because also, it would be really stupid and hard to justify. Stun. Onto the tiny, the wall is down. We'll find it connected onto them well. But Mio is just going to stand in the middle of the heal up. They're trying to snipe out the Oracle. We're going to bring him low with the illusion coming out in effect from Dark Seer, but not enough damage. Oracle is going to sell, but Tiny's going to be brought down. Mio is extremely low, though. And I don't think he's able to siphon off and up here. He's able to run away in the meantime. 33 does have the surf, able to move away. They force the buyback out the tiny. Now, Khan, this is looking awkward. They just need to get out. Overstayed their welcome, and they know they're probably going to lose one. It's going to be Mio, though. It's still alive. They're actually just. Trying to bring down this TP, but failing really badly. In the meantime, Millen's going to be brought down. That's its buyback. Either the dieback. And Mio, look at that. Full HP again. All this effort is for now. As far as the arrow and beats the dust. Radiant structures are full. Oh. <laughs> the stream tells of tactics.
Look at his progress, by the way. Our buyback is putting back where he was a few minutes ago in terms of progress. And this is so critical. Like, you saw Pango. Right? Like, Pango needs to be controlling the DP, DK, or the TB, right? And then Tiny should be finding and killing the Oracle straight away. Okay. Instead, the Oracle stands there, Fates Edict, suddenly Tiny's trying to burst down a DP where he does no damage because of Fates Edict. And then the Oracle still escapes because Pango is the only one who can reach. It's getting worrisome because, yes, yeah, Skidder has this E-Blade, but like I'm kind of shrugging and going, what for at this rate? You still aren't confident until you got a Manta because of the silence on the DP. Definitely a game. Not many kills, by the way. I just looked up the kills. I felt like that was our first nice. real fight. Two to eight. Uh, almost 20 minutes into the game. We're 18 minutes in. Not even a kill a minute, guys. Like, I know there's going to be people right now Resident Sleeper in the chat. We did mention this, right? I'm not gonna lie, I'm kind of hoping Mug Golem's next game will pick Bat Rider, because I'm looking forward to the moment I get to just say that you know Mud Golems are now dragging people into Mud Golems. <laughs> I saw that. I have low expectations, low desires. Because the because the mud golems will last the racks one into the mud golems. Because then I get to say mud golems, mud golems, mud golems. Okay, better, better one, better one. What if, what if they pick Ench and Doom and they mud golem? Chen as well. Yeah. So so I want them to step it up. They need Chen as well. No one's ever going to pick Chen plus Ench in the same game. Not right now. But. Imagine. I think that may have a few months back. Uh, maybe. Actually, it probably happened a lot back when Ench was a good core pick. A long... Oh my god. Is it even that long ago that Ench was a good part three? But it feels like it, right? No, no. Like, before they changed uh, Impetus and Untouchable around. Like, good for a while. Uh, it's kind of like, it's like, that's how I played. It's this whole idea, your job is to distract and absorb as much as possible. True, but you have to be harder to kill depending on the hero. So it's like, uh, imagine the same life as, uh, oh, it was, it fit the meta because it was like, remember the times, like, for a year, I think it was, where it was, like, the offlane mentality was, if I have less than 10 deaths in 20 minutes, I've done my part. And the, like it was just under absorb Radiant and get thrown under the bus. Like every team was throwing their offline under the bus. Uh, and that's where it kind of fried. Because it's good. <laughs> I believe back then you could also enchant Catapult. They're trying, but... Yeah, the arrow... Maybe spook them a bit. It stopped just short of poking them in the buttocks. And now they'll reset. Go main on the tower to prove. Already down to half HP. And that's your initiation, guys. So uh, I think this can't go for Roach. Branya, jump to wall. In a choke point. This looks good, actually. Lot down coming. E Blade bring them down. Vacuum to get rid of them to death. They bite back, they bite back hard, and now J4 should be the last one to bite the dust. This is a double kill for Branya and straight into the pit. Mm -hmm. It used to get called the OG high ground, right? Uh, that was back in TIA days. The map was a bit different then, but the whole notion is the same. This, this will beat the team. This will always beat them. Um, and it's weird that they play into that area when one thing that we didn't highlight on, because I feel like I talk about it every time, is the Pangolier in a game. 
is the power of fighting in choke points for the side of, of Muslims. It's ridiculous. Like, you just saw it with the wall, the vacuum. If Tiny was alive there as well, imagine the avalanche types in that choke point. I think the other cool part was like um oracle was playing too far back because he was trying to save the initial jump in case that went wrong right so when they take board the oracle was like double the distance away from the fight that she should be and therefore there's no false promise save or face edict and once again no face edict he, he brought low almost dead already he also dodged it out skid is hanging around ready to fight turns into dk looking for stomp the false promise does come out and now they'll just stun up and drop j4 trying to burst him down skidder is hit off the spirit vest tail is well free from low but not enough he's able to wait for the way he's gonna live to fight another day doesn't even have to give over the aegis that is i mean that's exorcism that's gonna run out soon he's gonna reinitiate on the farter hench is gone like the side of Carney eating venison. That's not good enough. There's an exorcism for boss five. Mud golems are smiling right now. Radiance bottom tower is under attack. And a false no pro promise. Do. I mean, a, like false promise. That's the level one, by the way. J4 is not level twelve yet. So there's a window here where if you're mud, mud golem, you can make a play. You wish that you had a tiny bit of a blink dagger right now. You I feel like this is going to be one of the latest blink timings I've seen in a professional game in quite a while. No, I, it's kind of weird, right? I think it's on Khan's ability to pressure the map early, but you notice what you see in most games where there's a tiny in the four. It's like the mid rotates and then gives the lane to the tiny. But because of the way they pressured around the mid, that, that transfer of farm that occurred. Taking me back to the days where Pangali used to silence people. Dark days. Yes, it's. What, what was it? it? It could do either and then sometimes both, right? Because, like, each proc could be either or. That was when mid Pangalier was at its top, like, all the time. A little bit crazy. Stun. Skid up. He didn't morph. Arrow through as well, but the roll through from Varani to break up the fight and ensure he's safe. Blip from Milan. He's finally got it online. The Avalanche is just in the vacuum through. They've already got rid of two. The false promise to try and save Mio, but he's got BKB and standard fight. Not much sure he's supposed to do so. The Skid up, while he is silenced up, he's. He's okay. He turns on Cheshire Cat. They'll bring him down. Mio running away. The BKB is running out, and Miller's moving forward with that haste. He'll see him. He can blink Avatos to him and drop this, and it looks like the DP is going to go down as well, as everyone but the TB is gone on the side of Carmen, and they will lose their tier one tower. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the, the unison movement as well, right? Like, you know, with that roll through at the clutch moment as well, because I think there was a Crypt Swarm being charged up and DP was about to... Everything just executed beautifully. And Mud Golems, I mean, this is what we want to see. Some signs of life, right? Like, this, this is the difference in the last two fights is that Morphling is actively involved in these engagements. He's realized that he can't sit back and just hit creeps forever anymore. Whereas when you look at Naive, Naive is actually still doing a lot. No, we already highlight morph value is so huge um, in a lot of aspects, actually. I think reflection is so much stronger now than it used to be.
you lose your composure yeah like you had your stride and, and you trip over right it's like uh imagine you're building momentum as you run you're running faster and trip over you're gonna have to start from a slow pace again to because mm -hmm. you don't have attack. that powerful voice in the team right that, that just forces you back on track like uh you think pop think solo these uh ppd these captains that kind of infamous for like saying this is this is my dog this is gonna be our dodo this is what we do now in Neo's deep exorcism he needs to try to escape Sans comes out and the Piranha in the meantime they're just right clicking him down Millen might die but is Neo in the meantime the false promise does come out they've already got the Oracle for it though the wall there is so many illusions in this right now Gilga to move away he's got the smash you know for the buyback comes out from the tiny in the meantime and Naive with his BKB just trying to escape will be able to do so Cheshire Cat does hang around the pins came out he's able to blink away what's the buyback out it doesn't cost them too much it was Exorcism. Cheshire Cat might be the final casualty because they do have the swashbuckle to keep on chasing. No props though. And the invis will ensure that DK walks away in one piece as well. Yeah, it's a very confident... Well, I was going to say, it's a very confident play by Millen, right? And I can see where it's coming from. I actually kind of commend the fact that he's staying this confident because when you think about how his game began, it can be very easy to kind of lose that, that stride we were talking about as an individual performer in the team because this hasn't been what we're used to from Tiny's. This hasn't been kind of like a pop-off in the first 20 minutes and then hit her off. He's kind of trying to do the opposite here. See if he can. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially against the DP. The reduced healing coming out from Spirit Siphon. Like every fight, Mio is being saved by the amount of damage, like the amount of health rather he's taking away from his bones. With Scardi, they just removed that factor. Villain? Okay. It's it. Initiation on a scared of it. And as it moves away, the Sans and Piranha, they will root him up, but they can't reach him to go up the stun. They'll try now with the Yules. Washbuckle to get away is in time though. He's got the wrong thunder. The dragon tail is not quick enough. Should be the end of the fight. It looks like they might try and disengage inside of Mud Golems. They've just seen what they can force out of DP in the meantime. Yeah. It's. It, he's kind of reached that point. Um, He's going to pick KB next. Sometimes we see people go for like Basher or Diffusal to get that value, but it's just important to get his ult off in this game. Hmm. Mm. I, I think like the classic statement I, I've ever heard is uh, like one of the best ones of Doha is uh, getting 5k MMR is just pressing buttons. Sounds very demeaning, but it's like using spells. Yes, that is true. Dyer's to like to, to like send it further, but like um, I think one of the, the most classic ones is uh, for, for those low ranking players is, is, is that I've heard is people don't use their spells, right? And to relate this back to this game, Baranya will be able to do exactly that with the BKB because I was kind of getting lost in the podcast moment. And it's like, yeah, just use your spells, guys. Just press buttons and you'll be a better player. Press them. Don't click them. If, you're, if you don't have keybinds and you're clicking your buttons, that's probably step one. I knew someone who'd done that. That's horrifying. Like how, how, do you, how do you play the game and not lose doing that? Radiance there, you, there you go. Thank you. <laughs> that was where we go. Everyone in that rank must have been using them. That's how I gained MMR, guys. I switched from using one hand to using two. Uh, the MMO mice, yes. I'm a, uh, I'm a sweat lord FPS. I have one of those FPS mice. Minimalistic. And I, I tell you what's quick off is the uh, the precision aim, but they change your GPI and you hold it, yeah. And it's like, well, that's bad for muscle memory. Why would you ever do that? 
a thorough rip off. You could alternatively just have like a different setting for when you're aimed in. And we're going to see Mudgal aim and try and pull the trigger on Khan here. Cheshire Cat break in the smoke on the high ground. Oh, the team down on low ground. Dragon Tail comes out. He will have to beat KB. Dark Sid away from the arrow to save the day, but he still gets caught. 33 in a bit of trouble. Ron funded through to control the fight. The exorcism has been committed. They're straight away on to 33. So it's not get him out of the way. Beat all used on the side of Khan. They know they have to take Roshi, and that's exactly what they'll do. Damn, I'll hope so. I'm just damn cheap without the DD, but yes, the DD with the crits as well. No way of stopping that. Bardock does get done. Have you heard of Med have you heard of Meta TV? I, I hear it's a strong hero. He's, he's very good at clicking. <laughs> okay, that's all I got for you. No, he leaves the illusions to do it for him. He's still looking for people to kill. <laughs> Fine, he'll come and he'll for the last moments of the Meta Ball. The problem is, the tier 1 tower, so that is going to reset on the tier 2. And the other big problem is, if you do try and push this, you're now going to be doing it without your Metamorphosis, without your Exorcism, and without your Elder Dragon form. And without your Oracle, because Varania is considering this one. He's like, I see potential here. Someone is going to die. Oh, oh no! <laughs> he gets stuck twice! Oh, the dragon fell straight away. Melani blocks the arrow to save the day, but Varanya Rudolph can't move away quick enough. He's going to lose the tiny. They're going to be for the fight here, which means that Varanya is going to go down as well. And they're not done. They're going to find the Enchantress as well. Arrow isn't going to be on the mark, but they don't need it anyway. Fada knows that he is turned from deer into toast. Radiant's top tower is under attack. Did he not watch himself? playing himself earlier because <laughs> that's where we got the presentation footage from <laughs> oh, no. middle tower mm. it, it, it's not even a quick kill it's like that's the worst part about it it's like you go for that kill you know it's not quick because what do you have as a pangolier you build these ags and it's not like basher in there as well right it's not gonna be one roll, then another one, and Oracle dead. 33 is, however, very dead. No, no, don't, don't deceive yourself here. This man will not be saved. And so, so the exorcism. I wouldn't be surprised they try and end this. Mm -hmm. There it is. They identify it correctly. They move in and come. And Last game, the TBs win a lot of games, and it's looking like this one might at this rate. Hesitate though, they go, this isn't quick enough. The Morphling could burst one of us if we're not careful. I only have a Daedalus, a Scardi, a BKD, a Hunter, two Dragon Hearts, and an Aegis on this TB. Uh, yeah, they'll get one of the tier 4s. Brand new's already used the wrong Thunder, and look at yourself. You're just going in and praying that you can disarm him because if you don't, the TV is going to kill you. Cheshire Cat jumps in with the Dragon Tailor on top of the arrow fall, does get the kill. And I believe this is where you start contemplating the next game because there is no stopping Naive right now. He'll back off for the moment. Rana is dead, but still not. He should go for a whole day I'm right now because this is, this is a painful experience that you need to refresh from. We'll go away. Uh, you're 20k down now. And we are very much in Terrorblade territory. And everyone here on the Raven side is staying illegally. And if they see that DD, they'll just go straight for the juggler. Because Naive will have the metamorphosis in just a minute. Uh, he skewed up the Ags. Pretty goddamn effective in this game. Well, yeah, but like if you instantly catch, like look at all the heroes on Muggle, right? If they get caught in a fear, they die very quick. They're very reliant on other saving one another, right? Like the surge to get one out, the heals from the, the darks here. The tiny white time with the Avalanche toss. It's just a giant AoE stun.
maybe. Maybe their real power comes from if my golems all build Helm of Dominance and then they get my golems and then they have a 10 man team. They're going to be one man down right now. Skidder found straight away. BKB gets activated to stay on top of him. And he's got both dead for 100 seconds. And the Pangolier is doing nothing. Tiny's trying to run away. 33 is looking for relevance, but he's not going to find anything. He's going to find another death. So they'll run him down and kill him off. We keep by the TK illusion. That hits pretty goddamn hard right now, but they're ignoring it. They're dealing with the other heroes. Buyback coming out. Oracle ensuring that if he's needed, he'll be able to be there. But they're going for the throw. They're already in. No. He saved that. He's like, whoa, I don't want to give I don't want to give 33 a uh, ranged illusion. I'll give him the melee illusion. He can kill my support. So this is done. When when your tiny does that, just to be able to use a buyback, you know you're done. Less. No, 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 no. GG. They're like, we could hit the throne or we could force them to type those two letters.
have 10 seconds left. You have 5 seconds left. Dire Team Ban. seconds left you have five seconds left You have 10 seconds left. You have 5 seconds left. for you it's us we're back we return and i swear that monster can go bigger on dan's camp you Come have on. 10 seconds left radiant team pick dude i would totally buy like if you could get a kind of body size i don't know how i drink it i need like a levy system right just to get it up not that i used to have issues oh hell yeah let's go dude it's like a oh uh, you know what you get one that'd be very elegant it would be like a you kind of crack the the top open like you would a normal monster but it's just like it's a conversion it flips over to be kind of like a pour out tube type thing i don't know i don't know how cheap that's gonna how expensive that's gonna be i can't imagine left. making them a mass would be easy but, you know what, just give me a giant can I'll, I'll be, i don't really hit the gym too often these days so i'll just be there like yanking on it trying to open up this like that thick giant steel can and failing <laughs> it's like, is it worth it? Mm. Yep, there's plenty of them. Uh, I've chugged most of them. I mean, consumed at a reasonable, moderate pace. There's something really rewarding about the original. And Mango Loco. You know what else is good, though? Other than the impeding Doom release, which can be amazing. It's Dross! No. Uh, look at that. Mud Golem versus game number two. I keep calling them Mud Golem instead of Golem because I like to feel that they're so in sync, they're so in unison. They are one Golem that splits into ten. The You have ten seconds left. It sounds like some sort of weird religion, right? Like the Great Golem. Left. They all came from one Mud Golem. There we go. I mean, it's like, so So really, Alliance is the original Muggle. Uh -huh. But then, then after Fire 33 went separate ways from the origin point of the big Muggle, they somehow reunified into another Muggle. And, th and thus, to, they moved away from Alliance, joined the Horde. And like, it still looks like a very Horde hero. I don't know why we went to World of Warcraft. I played World of Warcraft for the first time. Interesting. Yeah, I'd never played it before. It's new to me. Yep. Good to, well, I haven't done the classic. Like, someone got me in the retail. I want to go play classic. But instead, I'm here with you guys, educating you on Dota with my... You can't see it right now because we're in the draft. Push my my, my, eye, my extra eyes up, my glasses, and saying my very big brain explanations. Uh, as you see, Life Stealer comes up in the draft. He's a hero that steals life, but he doesn't. He's actually a contradiction now. 
He used to steal life, but now he fabricates life. He's actually life fabricator. Dire team ban. Radiant team ban. Um, they changed it compared to the old avalanche for now, right? So you don't get that window because it's not mini stuff. Because they uh, it used to, like that's been one of the big things I think that made Tiny even better is like you can't do things Dire avalanche. It stuns, 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 stuns. I, it's one of those things you don't think about, right? Like, you're like, eh, rage is always good at that. Um, you know, here's a thought, actually. I, I'm stuck on this life still thing, okay? If he is not, a, like, he's not truly a life stealer, he's a life fabricator. That actually means that he's a life liar. Because he's telling everyone that he steals life. He doesn't. He magically fabricates it out of his anus or something. I don't know. Well, no, he climbs an anus as the hero does. Sure, but like, like, like you know, that's, that's, that's life killer. Like, you're stealing the life stuff. Well, you're not absorbing it. You're, it's not like the old adage of I'm going to take a chunk off them and eat it. He's just like slapping them and then he's going, all right, now I'm just going to turn around and magically make health appear. It's... Fair point, okay? He does not steal life anymore. Ex <laughs> Petition to change Life Stealer's name to Life Fabricator, please. Oh, yeah, I'm not gonna lie, Pigeon. That's a dumb one, and that's a no. Nah, I've never thought about a game in normal fashion. I just get stuck doing Ogre Magi ones at the time. I'll move on to that. You have 10 seconds left. Uh -oh. The TV's gone. The Ember Spirit's you have gone. Sanking is a bit of an interest. I haven't really seen much SK right now. I don't mind him as a hero as well. Like in the current context uh, of Veil, you know, when we saw Bloodseeker, I think a big part that makes Bloodseeker look so good right now is how powerful Veil is on heroes that can justify it. And Sanking is among them. Among Fire us, as a style. Good game for ruining friendships. Ranks right up there with Dota. <laughs> I mean, that's like, like, like that's not not coming. That's like saying I trust them because I'm I I distrust. You have ten seconds left. Whoa. You have, have you never done that before? Left. It's like uh, it's the big brain. Exactly. You play the Mafia, Resistance. Yeah, but then they get really sweaty. Like, I used to play a lot of Trouble in Terrace Town. You get to the point where uh, there's always that friend that does things like spell innocent backwards because you have innocent running the screen. And if you hesitate, they'll shoot you. Like, there's those people that try too hard, okay? Ruins discovery. All right, which team is trying out of here? I mean, so far, mud golems. Whenever I see a voice spirit, you're trying to win. This hero is just, it's kind of like the new cookie card pick in a lot of ways. You can just stick it into any lineup. Yes, like I'm, I'm not, not saying it's like a, a fullback, right? Like, uh, mm -hmm. there's rarely so there's only a, I'd say there's only like a handful heroes that a voice spirit is not okay lane against uh chief among them would be anti-mage which has already been banned out i think that's a big part of why they banned it as well like voice spirit hates heroes that have uh ulterior like an alternative way of doing damage right because you're all about like harassment absorption through your resonant pulse so that they right clicks do dilly squirt an anti-mage for example is going to take giant chunks of your health alongside your like your mana and thus your hero you cannot function. Ten seconds left. I think I always reference you the secret there was a secret left. game, I can't remember which team it was, but they got Matuma Mani's anti mage and just stuck Radiant it against the Void Spirit. And it was the saddest Void Spirit yes. game I've ever witnessed. How did it get this? I mean everyone's like right clickers, right cat ban ban carries, ban cat there's an end still in the game? You 
have 10 seconds left. It's okay. I don't think it's like a crazy inch game. I think Fada just Good likes this hero as a default. Uh, when we last saw him in Alliance, his real big default hero was Jakiro all the time. Um, he's very good at kind of identifying as a solid hero, like what is kind of your meta, and kind of leaning into the fact that will do fine so he can kind of focus on the grand scheme in the game, kind of control the pace, dictating what people should be doing. Because uh, that's actually something a lot of players like I've always heard about Farda. Anyone who's played, uh, played with Far will say that they always thought he'd make a good captain because his game sense is insane. He can anticipate things minutes ahead of time. You have mm -hmm. five seconds Dino left. Team ban. You have ten seconds left. You have five seconds left. No. And the interesting thing is he doesn't really take these greedy fives that like, I'ma just be a core anyway, baby. I don't care what you want. Like you, you think of Chikiro, it's good at shoving out lanes, but it's a hero that if it gets gold, great. If not, you can still do what it says on the tip. Um, and, and I kind of like that. Like, it's, as you said, it's not easy to go from a two to a five overnight. It's even harder to change your entire mentality of like how you want to play the game. It's... You have 10 seconds left. I, that depends on whether they want to lose the game. You have five seconds left. Because I'm pretty sure you don't kill very well in this game against these versus the Rubik men. You shot the voice Night. down for a few levels. All right. So looks like this. I mean, this could still be a Night Stalker mid. I doubt it, but I've seen a few teams. Yeah. I've seen a few teams try the mid, but most likely. You have 10 seconds left. You have five seconds I think you still run the voice for it fine. Like it's, yeah, yeah. See, so it's kind of like, Sometimes you see that match. I, I know why you probably like your brains default to it. It's like sometimes you see that match up and you see a voice spirit almost die. Then like the voice spirit is kind of like, okay, okay that's Tiny's whole combo, all of his mana, everything. Uh, so you don't mind. Right now, they probably need an offlaner, something that can kind of build auras and go up front with the lifestealer. Uh, something like Underlord, for example, which got banned out by them in the final phase, actually. So I don't know about a Beastmaster here. Yeah, there you go. Your hero. Thank you. I get half of a, a shiny because I doubt myself for a second. I was about to say that it's really good against the Night Stalker because you can see him coming a mile off. Uh, usually Night Stalker... Yeah, it's good against more of them, but also the Night Stalker usually tries to get close and then Dark Ascension, right? But your Hawk is going to make that approach impossible. Also, look at that! We're back in the zoom meta, guys! Woo! No one's happy to hear that. How do we feel about the zoom? Was it really like that bad? Sure, like if you had to compare it to like troll sniper meta, right? It's kind of like that moment where someone doesn't get the new, like the new PlayStation 5 they want for you Christmas. They get they get PS4 and a half functioning PC. It's like, you could only have a PS1 right now. It's a very good console, but it's very outdated, right? And PS1, like in today's age, Actually, that's an unfair comparison. I guess in the minds of like troll and sniper spammers, they think of it in that way because it was good for them. But it's kind of like uh, thinking back on it, unless you're a sniper or a troll, it's kind of like Tinker Pickers right now, right? The only person having fun in that game is Tinker Picker. And occasionally the, the bounty picker because he's a sicko. What I'm saying is screw Tinker. <laughs> I'm going on I'm going on a rant about Tinker Pickers now. We've brought it around. Screw Tinker Pickers. You Wow. You're uh you're really like you're really settling this analyst role. That's like all my other analysts do with me. <laughs> Hmm. 
<laughs> it's like he's covered the troll and the sniper. And I used to talk about Tinker. I talk about Hawk Warden. Screw that hero too. Uh, Mud Golems. I think the beast can kind of be definitive. I, I do like the zoo meta they've got. Like against these heroes and Khan, I could see these early pushes like closing the map quick. Um, my only concern is like you've got this off lane Night Stalker and you do have a morph. I think Mud Golem's draft is designed to play Dota a lot quicker. And if we're being totally honest, teams that are able to play the Dota quicker early but still have scalability have been taking a lot more game in the current meta. So I, I'd probably say I'm a, a little bit on Mud Golem's side. I'm like. 60 40 because Khan's execution of the last game was really good. I didn't want to go there, but yes, it's like, I didn't want to follow up by demeaning them. You know, I call it an insultment where you compliment someone and then instantly insult them. It's like, you did a great job, but. Thirty seconds to battle. Uh, yeah, and Lifesteal uh, EU has played quite differently draft approach than CIS Lifestealer. Every time I see CIS Lifestealer, it's she with like this really bulky mid, and you kind of play this double runny lineup. Like I, I'll always remember in recent memories, like Fly to Moon taking, I don't know, like a DP Lifestealer and both of them building a heart. They just, that, that whole HP is resourcing again to the extreme. Whereas uh, when EU teams playing, like when Secret ran it recently, it's usually these more fragile heroes. Life still kind of tries to lean into that and can save the day with these invests. Not as a bomb, but as a, oh crap, you're almost dead, buddy. Here's an extra giant chunk of HP out of nowhere. Once again, Life Fabricate. Not just Disruptor. Uh, Cheshire Cat. Yeah. Dyer's top tower is oh yeah yeah uh, uh the thing i was gonna like connect onto that is you've got crippling fear right so if he comes him and night was on top of him no rage opportunity you're just done Also, another fault in this game is uh, there's a lot of pressure on Varane's performance because I, I've seen plenty of like games where you can get Ags against the Morph and because you can instantly get on top of him and just cast Resident Pulse, sometimes they can't react. Like double Resident Pulse burst can kill Morph a lot. But, but also, Spirit Vessel is pretty good against all of his cores and if you don't build a spirit vessel on the void spirit, who's building the spirit vessel? I, I feel like there's a lot of items that are good for Piranha, but it's, you know when you have one of those games where it's like, all these items are good, but I feel like I need all these items. And... Most do. I think it depends. Like, if it starts to pop off, I see this so many times. When the voice spirit starts to get a lead, they confidently queue up the eggs until something goes wrong. And then they'll, like, reset. But yeah, this is not sensible. It's going to work. Actually, Brian is getting pressured a little, but like, that's just. That's going to be the, the avalanche effect plus a few clubbings coming in. That's all going to happen, basically. Top so far is pretty chill. I'd say Cheshire Cat's pretty decent here. Like he's out CSing the Lifestealer, which is not something a Night a Night Stalker gets to say often about his embarrassment. And then bot like naive 
him too much. J4 is just taking all the pressure out of these two on the side of my golems. Uh, he's already out of regen, so there's going to come a point where you've got to get a crap ton more. He's got three tangos coming. I don't know if that's going to be enough, though. Naive is getting really low here. He might just be dead. Gone. Ah, level one attribute shift. How painful you are. But that's the that's the brutality of the race, right? Like if Beastmaster beats you to free, that happens. It's because you never want to take waveform early as a warfare. Oh. Alright. No I like this straight away as well. He's he's denying his ward. Because he, he knows it's obvious. Arrow as well, and Jay is dead. Like this is kind of my concern is the mud golem could just be more aggressive on this lane, and it is starting to come to fruition very clearly. Mhm. Mm yeah, it's the race three. Radiant structures are fortified. Mm. Mm. Sure. I think the difference to keep in mind here is that it's a beast master. This is one of those heroes, like if you give him a good start, it's like imagine a partner with a good start is number one. These heroes just obliterate towers and they can just transition lanes and take all the early towers, which is a giant influx of gold. Uh, the heroes the boys for it use very well. Well, they're trying now. Yeah, Gilga could just body block him right now. Gilga might die for it. He could just TP right now, but he doesn't feel pressured to. It is night time. I don't expect Cheshire Cat to make any rotations in this first night time. Like, he's only level 4. And where would you rotate in this game? Baranya is not a kill. And Bot, I think if you run in right now against the level 5 Beastmaster, you die. Just a tad. No, it's... Apparently not when the lifestealer has the same attack speed because of his passive, right? It's like, look at these two. 40 attack speed for Cheshire Cat and 45 for Skitter. And also, he's also got his blaze attack already, so he does hurt a little bit. It's always weird how much changes with a lifestealer right now when you get phase boots, right? You just, you kind of, kind of don't care about him right now because as we said, you don't lose your percent HP. He just gains them. And then all of a sudden phase boots turns him into a right-click machine. It's a life fabricator. <laughs> yeah, it's just chill and farm now. It's very hard to rotate. And do something. Maybe Tiny could come up, but... It's going to be predictable. Uh, any move he makes, Baranya will mirror on the other side of the map onto the bottom, which is an easier kill. Once he has blink, though, things could change. Problem is, you're still only a quarter of the way towards that. It's right now. It's not just your cat job to like define the game. That'll come around like the 15, 20 minute mark whenever he gets his blink, basically, uh, uh, because that is very good against multiple heroes here. Like, there's no chance for a rage for life stealer. Also, Baranya can suffer a lot, but he will probably go Yules to kind of offset that. Still, crippling fear lasts a very long time at night. Mhm. Mm yeah, Morph is, Morph is getting a CS right, but the difference is that now with the Helm of Dominate completed, there's going to be a lot of pressure when the catapult comes. Got to be a little bit more high pitched about it. Really lean into it. To accidentally sit down too hard.
I just love watching the mid lane. Isn't he? I was like, oh, 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 fine. He's going to be the one to get the rune, though, because Ruby did rotate. But once again, like, it'll be a case of you'll burst Baranya to half HP, and that's kind of it. Can't really ever kill Zero, and you can't rotate heroes in that really do it either. I think he'll probably just back off and like fully regen. Or now that he has an ocean's heart, just stand around in the river. You ever done that? You're like, oh, this is so good in this area. I'm gonna rotate up the river and it's productive. Speaking of productive, bot lane, morphing, and also the disruptor going down. Oof, killed by Milan. He's doing all the work here. He's just a one man army. Let's ignore the entire army next to uh -huh. He, he subscribes to the Sing Sing Mentality Dog. Maybe the Sentinel is helping a little bit. Arroo! In does connect, but Cheshik is now here. Yeah, he was morphing. And now, 33 in a lot of trouble. No easy way to get away from this as J4 does arrive. They've got the glimpse to work with as well if they need it. Bring him back. He will just turn on a J4 straight away. He's like, if I'm going down, you're coming with me. But no way to stop it. Yep, the centaur just walks away, so no extra gold for you. Even on the side, though, Mio, good rotation in. He's able to find a kill on Milan. The centaur will live, though. He's like, this is the real off laner. This is our discount centaur war runner. There was a rotation from the Void Spirit, by the way. I don't think he found anyone, though. He just ends up playing himself. I mean, it, like, look at how little rotation power he's had, right? Like, he tried to get top, and everyone from the side of Khan responds for. That's the one situation in which the mirroring doesn't work, is when Khan decide they want to commit the entire team to the bot lane. Naive has spot. They decide against the primary roll, though. There's no easy play there. However, Chorus! Not a yes, please. Another one of those. How many is that now? Three? Yeah. Oh. He moves deeper into his jungle where he won't feel like he's treading on dangerous terrain. And he knows the tower's gonna fall. There you go. Well, the thing is, 33 on top of that mid lane, there is actually a good pick off. I think Baranya had some assistance from Milan, but they do get the kill. The more important thing that's gonna happen is the pressure on these towers. With the catapults, I actually love this because. If you force Tiny back, you're already done pressure on the tower because you've got the Capo there. And you know that bot lane's going to fall to 33. Like a ripe apple. The Radiant have called upon their defenses. Radiant's middle tower is losing its foundation. Also, they're pressuring. Like, Mio has to stand here, uh, but it doesn't have to care. Like, every Capo is pressuring towers right now. Mm -hmm. oh. tower has fallen. The Yoga did get the arrow, by the way. I mean, it's only a level 1 arcane supremacy, but they have decent lockdown with the tiny, so tiny plus the Rubik could be the killing combo now. Yeah, it's just like the assured stun, right? Because Avalanche Toss basically holds the person in place now. Regeneration! The important part is not to get greedy in life, right? Like, take what you need and then just enough to run your own lemonade store. Then you make lemonade. More money profit down the line. I don't know where I'm going with this one. I just really feel like some, some lemon flavored monster, right? Make lemonade. <laughs> I don't know if that's an efficient use of slots, but yes, that is a, a potential thing you could do with your money. Uh... Just a custom game now. Upgrade your Blink Dagger to get double range. <laughs> Upgrade it again. Or triple. Let's get up. Toss on the spot. Uh, I don't think that's how the combo works. And 
now Baranya. Look how deep he is in. A lot of damage coming out. Going to chase forward. Remnant comes out. The Rubik's control him up. Star still doing a lot of damage. They find the kill. Cheshire Cat trying to chase in. Crippling Fear out. On the Enchantress, who he could very easily hit right now. As far as still not level 6 yet. With the assistance of Naive, he should be able to find the kill. But that'll be it. That's all you get. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, a lot of pressure comes out of that tier 1 in the mid lane, courtesy of the Beastmaster. Baranya has a tree inside of him. Can you guess what it is? Fisher Cat might find out what it is if he hangs around here. Like, like this is the type of present you don't want. This is like someone that gets you a sweater for Christmas. Surprise, Rubik, here's your gift. I guess I shouldn't equate sweaters received to die unless you're like allergic to wool. I mean, it depends if, once again, you're expecting that PS5. You, you went very defensive. I feel like someone was denied the PS5 request. Ooh, some heroes might be denied life of this, right? Day 4? I mean, he's duking out to an extent. I say to an extent because he bought for two more seconds. This tower is still going to get down. I just like this from Uncle. This is just so clean. Like, look at the map right now. What's missing from a few minutes ago, do you think? Is it is it all the tier one towers on the Radiant side? Radiant's top tower has fallen. It's so hard. Ah. You're one of those people. <laughs> just hit people. Just stun people. Just kill people. Yeah, just kill. It's not like they have hawks. Yeah, it's not like they have these hawks given vision or they have fairly tanky heroes. It's not like this voice for it's not even easy to kill right now. Just kill people. See, look, look at Bot. Just kill him, lol. Why are you not killing him? Just kill him. Wait, no, 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 no don't get killed by it. Okay. Clearly, they just need to listen to you. Such a limited imagination. Radiance Courier is with us no more. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's, uh, I think that's going to become standard build it's like this hero already hit so fast right and you could go for more farm focused builds but like lifesteal is a hero that feels so powerful in the mid game why wouldn't you maximize that value i'm sorry i'm just i'm still imagining in my head like you as the khan coach like, what, what, what's the sale pitch turning khan into khan <laughs> ah i see you just want them to yell loudly into the mic how bad does the acting happen? Again, good opponents. You're gonna be Team Secret. Invisibility. Yeah, you could have hit anything. Spock dies in one, Kirk in the other. I've spoiled the movie for everyone, but if you haven't seen it already, don't worry. If you saw it, it would have spoiled it anyway. And a spawn in J4's day. Stack Storm does go down. Jump in by just catch to the back line. Trying to bring down 33, but he's just too tanky. Rang is still alive. Mio, not. He's going to be brought down from a while from the Night Stalker. And this is getting a little bit out of control. That's about to get worse. I do see auras, and I do see a rush. this life into the afterlife and you know what this is a it's kind of weird with life still about it. it kind of fits what we're talking about this this it's easy to just play bulky heroes right and this is kind of the and like the, the the height of uh bulky heroes he's able to sustain he also can save other heroes like in that fight if at any moment you think brandy's gonna die you just invest into him 
and like what's your target otherwise if you later, can't nerds. like who are you picking off because Mirana's already got the spirit vessel most complete so he's pretty tanky and Ench not a great target he's got cloak he's got infused raindrop and you, you can't right click him down because you probably think he has untouchable so far he's ignored and put a point there. in the meantime this rock's going to be brought down Mio oh Mio door he's gone I would have called you ally tiny it's gonna get worse what is nastier than nastier Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. What about very nasty? Radiant structures are fortified. The stream tells Horrific. of tactics. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Or does it just come down to how you say it? Like, oh, that's nasty. Radiant's top tower is under attack. Dyer's bottom tower is <laughs> for aid. Dyer's bottom tower. Radiant's top oh. tower is for aid. Okay, what, what, what about like, oh, that's aid. bottom tower is under attack. I think you're going full fam. Right, does that work? Oh, Ritz. Oh, that. That's nasty, dude. Oh, they might be able to get rid of this Aegis. Oh, Tog was not on point, but Mio's dead. It was a good idea. Uh, the only problem is you now have no tiny for 40 seconds. The mid cave is put in, and I don't think they're leaving with the one set around. Well, should be a tier two as well. It's runes and money, right? Like, you just gain so much cash. I want to spend it. You know, BKB is getting there for 33. Uh, you're halfway to the it's already on Skidder. I don't think they got any new items right now to come out, but soon. We didn't even mention the Ags on the board, by the way, which kind of completely... It just kind of gives Khan the snip, right? They're neutered. Because none of their heroes can deal with it. Which is bad against the other heroes. Yeah, you remember what I was saying, right? The, the abs on a voice for it. Like, what you have to do is catch Naive fully agied, which can happen. And you instantly silence and all of a sudden you kill him. Speaking of that, they're trying to kill Baranya right now. You also buy some time. He might be tanky enough to live through this, though. Avalanche toss, but Glimmer Cape offsets the damage, assimilate, and move away. This tanky very much fought up. I don't know you. They, they do need to be careful. He just stands in the remnant. He's like, someone please come play. So, Science out, naive, there it is. That's what we were talking about. The science just completely invalidates the morph. And the follow up is going to get nasty. Day four gets brought down. Cheshire Cat yields the slim, so he's not able to move away. And it is daytime, the worst time to fight for a Night Stalker. Nighttime, fight time, daytime, also right time. Gilga will also go down, and I think you are about there. I think you're, you're, you're hovering over it, and Gilga hit the execute button on the GG. It's clean. I, I feel like they gave themselves a, a much easier to execute draft. Like that's that was the big thing we kind of highlighted on the previous game, right? Is that they had these few elements, but you could see that like the the kind of execute plan wasn't as simple for Mud Golems. Whereas last game, Khan had all these big goals. They just pressed 